Hello there. Welcome to my office. I am so glad that you have come to answer the call. This is a very dangerous mission here to sail to the Caribbean and stop El Bruja. Only very few have come to even offer their services. So tell me, um, what brings you? Why, why have you come to go on such a dangerous mission? You wouldn't happen to have any political connections to the Emperor of China, would you? Um, I do not, ma'am. Oh, excellent. Uh, <laughs> we, we are barely recognized by the governments of Europe. Lands such as far away as that, I, we have barely been a country for 10 years here. They, oh, wonderful. Then I can freely tell you that I'm a member of the Chan Di Hui, and we are seeking to overthrow the current emperor of the dynasty. And I heard you are paying well, and as you know, you can probably relate to this as a newly formed country, rebellions are expensive. Indeed, indeed they are, and, and yet, oh, thanks for the follow, and you, indeed they are expensive, and so I think you, you will understand how dear the money is that we are offering for you to come and slay this which one might say. So the, convince me, what, what makes you someone who's able to go on a mission like this? Oh, well, I have many skills, both mundane and otherwise. Um, as you probably know that I uh, have been overseeing some distribution of imports from China here along the coast of your newly formed country. Uh, so I have many connections uh, across the seas and can get you supplies that you need. And also, um, and then, uh, it, I don't know if uh, President Washington has noticed, but there's currently a hand sitting on his shoulder, disconnected from everything else. He looks by on his shoulder with stoic resolve, but you can see in his eyes he's very unsettled. The hand waves at him and then goes crawling down uh, his torso across the desk and reattaches to Taoxing's hand, to Taoxing's wrist. We're having some audio issues. I'm going to pause real quick. This is, people are saying that this, the music is, is, is very loud. Yeah, it's still pretty Kids. loud. It's pretty loud. It's pretty loud. I, I, okay. Turn off the music for now. We'll come back to that in a moment. We'll see if I can figure that out. If you need to turn it down in the app, you can. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, music. Ooh, that right. worked. Sure. That worked. We're good. Or, or did you turn it right off? Cause it. I just turned it right off. Oh, okay. Okay. How's it about now? Is it good? Okay. Jumping back in. Zombie hand on the shoulder. Zombie uh, hand on the shoulder, crawls down his torso, across the table, reattaches to Tao Xing's wrist, and they also wave at President Washington. Oh my. Well, um... Have you have you heard the stories of this Captain Bruja? She people say that she has has great magic powers, and I think someone with powers like yours might just be able to go on this mission. And well, I don't know how I compare to an actual witch, but I've studied a little bit of the arcane. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll be in touch when I've gotten an entire crew here together. You'll hear from me shortly. All right. And Kaoshing bows and takes their leave. 
All right. Dr. Runehart, you're called into president's, the president's office, makeshift here in New York. Dr. Runehart, thank you for answering our advertisement. I hope Yes, of course. I, uh, I no longer have uh, <clears throat> issues with the uh, colonies since retirement, so happy to uh, take the job. Wonderful, wonderful. So this is indeed a very dangerous mission. You're here to sail to the Caribbean to hunt down a notorious pirate that some have said has magical powers. Why, why are you willing to go on such a dangerous mission? Uh, once a Navy man, always a Navy man, and uh, danger is part of the job, so retirement doesn't uh, pay as much as one might hope. And, uh, well, to be honest, you've offered quite a bit compared to uh, what I would be used to. And I appreciate it. Wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're willing and able. Um, when considering who to select for this mission, I need to make sure that you're up for the task. What, what sets you apart from other, other Navy men who I might send on this? Mm. Uh, well, I've got uh, a lot of uh, experience under my belt, you might say. And he, uh, pulls out a, uh, a compass and kind of clasps Washington's hand to the compass and activates it, and it starts to spin. And within the radius of the room, uh, shadows of, of the previous people who have walked in and out, Washington himself walking through, pacing, interviewing various people, you can see kind of a, a replay of what's happened in the immediate room. And he tilts the compass a bit and it starts to move forward and you see Washington and Dr. Runehart shaking hands and nodding and Dr. Runehart leaving the room in this ghostly form and he lets go of the compass and it's proven uh, quite useful in uh, a myriad of situations. I, uh, hopefully you can see its utility. That, that is a indeed a wondrous piece of well, I couldn't even say what. Oh, Grimbeard, thanks for the raid, man. Just in time to hear us start. Well, thank you. Thank you for showing me. Where, where did you come across such a, a wondrous navigational tool? Indeed, I, uh, that may be a story for another time, but, uh, you know, the Navy has its perks and brings you to all sorts of places across the seas. Thank you, thank you for, for answering the call. Um, I'll be in touch shortly once I've collected enough people to crew for this mission. Indeed. Thank you. Captain Seaweed, you have been called into George Washington's office here in New York. Captain, you know, people like me and you don't always see eye to eye. But these times are desperate, and one of your ilk has become a thorn in the side of the United States. And normally, we are not in the business of offering letters of mark, and this isn't really one of those situations either. It's more of a, a bounty hunt than a treasure hunt. But you have come, you have answered for our need. What, pray tell, brings you here to go against one such as yourself? I'm uh, been a pirate on the seas a long time. Who else to help capture and bring down this pirate witch or Captain Bouja than I? 20 years at sea. Hmm. And what sets you apart from others that I might hire and pay to come and go on this mission? Well, I have a few tricks up my slave. I have this trusty ring. I call it the commandeering ring. I can 
pirate the ship or buy me lonesome if need be. But with a trusty crew, we can accomplish any given task. You'll see there's a, a mighty beast out there that once this is done, I, I plan to go and capture for myself. Nothing will take this away from me. I am driven from the heart. Mm. Thank you for, for coming here today. I will be in touch soon when I have found others to come on this mission. Turtle, you are now in President Washington's office. You have come to answer to come on this mission. And he says to you, <clears throat> we, have, we are looking for people of strong, adventuring sorts <laughs> to go and sail across the sea to track down this witch. She has been said to have magical powers to control the sea, to control its creatures, that the weather is at her beck and call. You, you, sir, I mean no offense, but you do not seem like the kind who should be up to such a task. Why, why have you come here to put your lot in for consideration? Oh, um, so you noticed, I, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, sort of past my prime, but, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm up for the task. Have you ever heard of Dr. Bugelstoat's Wonder Cure Elixir? Um, I can't say that I have, no. Well, it's very expensive. And you said that you'll pay me for this, right? Quite the king's ransom. Or a witch's ransom, you might say. Oh, excellent. It's so, it's so expensive. But if, if you're interested, I heard it could, like, regrow your hair? And it stimulates muscle growth, so you can be big and buff. And then, although it can bring back this, like, a youthful vigor that I am just interested in having. Once again, you know, the youth is wasted on the young. How much money is this again? This is more money than than you could ever dream. Oh. Well then, okay, I got a number. I'm coming back, Mr. President. Are you really the president? I just wandered in here. <laughs> I am. I am indeed. But uh -huh. this is not this is not a normal sort of mission. Uh, presidents can't be seen uh, being the kind to send people out to capture and murder people extra legally we we are just coming out onto the world stage as a as a country and if people saw the likes that i have been interviewing coming into my official quarters it would be unseemly don't you think well i feel rather insulted but i can understand your perspective I suppose. Well, I wasn't talking about you, per se, but... Oh, thank God. Yeah, I know. I saw this other guy. He was like a sea captain just leaving, and I thought he was an unkindly sort. Mm. Uh, you and I agree, but he... He seems to have... Have the metal one would need. What <laughs> What kind of skill do you bring to, uh, to this expedition? Guy... I have this monkey named Artemis. He's my best friend and companion. Um, I'm that. I'm the guy with the monkey. Uh, and then you see like a little monkey kind of crawl over the back of uh, Turtle's uh, turtle shell, which, by the way, isn't attached to his body. It's strapped there with rope. He doesn't have a tortoise shell on his back, uh, and it sort of sits on the back and gives a little wave. Um, this is Artemis. Well, thank you. What? I'm sorry. I don't think you properly introduced yourself. Is uh, is your name actually Turtle? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, Mr. Turtle, I'll be in contact once I've gotten a full crew. 
for this mission. And Excellent. you walk out. All right. Welcome, everyone, to 3D Dice. My name is Celeste Bloodrain, and you're here for our next Mountain Witch campaign. And I've got a wonderful cast of new players. Well, one returning cast member you might recognize, Captain Morgan. Why don't we start with you and go around for some introductions? Captain's on mute. Doesn't mean like you can hear me. Why, why don't you go for... Oh, Captain, you're back. Yes, yes. Um... Are we introducing ourselves or the, or the characters? I introduce guess we already did the characters. You already introduced your character. Tell us about uh, you. Uh, so, hey, guys. Uh, I, I guess I'm a variety streamer. I do all kinds of fun little tidbits like this. Um, I stream a lot of FPS games, but I also do a lot of tutorials. I even did a tutorial for DD Dice. So, so if you guys like Dice and you want to add them to your stream, I have a tutorial for you to do it in five different ways. Uh, so look forward to, to looking at that and watching that so you can do it. Um, besides that, uh, I like to consider myself a comedian, but you know, it, this depends on your humor, your personality. Um, I'm military. I've been in the army for 20 years. I'm looking to retire very soon. And I kind of poured that um, type of knowledge into my character as being a 20 year old pirate, right? Uh, so I'm trying to, I kind of like pouring my own self into this character and I, I have a, a good feeling about it. And I'm really excited to portray that tonight. You did there. Why don't we go on to you next, Nikki? <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Nikki Nerds Out. Some of you may know me. I see a couple people in chat who are familiar. I uh, stream on Twitch, I guess. I used to do a lot of D&D &D campaign building stuff, taking a break from that, currently writing a space smut novel yeah. <laughs> on stream <laughs> and also i like to play jrpgs on sunday it's a cozy cozy stream yes i do all the voices when i'm playing those games so come on by if you want a good story and want to hang out also if you like a creative productivity stream saturday is your day but for this weekend i'm spending my time here with celeste and crew to like obviously promote uh, this fantastic app, which I have used on my own stream, uh, and then also um, to like play this wonderful game that I've been spying on for two sessions now. She's run it twice, and I've been like, oh, I can't wait. And now I'm here. I'm like, oh, I'm terrified. <laughs> Anyways, hi, everybody. All right. How about Chase? You can go next. Sure. Uh, I'm Chase. I'm uh, one of the founders of an app called Pocket Bard. We, uh, if you use audio for your TTRPGs, you should check us out. It's music, sound effects, and it's the point is for it to be the most straightforward, easiest experience you've ever had uh, adding audio to your games. So, um, yeah, I occasionally stream on the Pocket Bard Twitch channel. Usually my business partner Alex does. Um, but yeah, you can check us out and you can download Pocket Bard on the App Store. It's free. Pocket Bard is amazing. Uh, all the music, except for the one that was Clash, I figured out what the problem was. My intro music was still playing while I was also playing the Pocket Bard music. Pocket Bard is amazing. We used it last time for the stream, for the Mountain Witch. We're using it again this time. And Chase, thank you for making the app that I never knew I needed, but am so in love with. Uh, Thanks for using it. <laughs> moving on. Beep, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Beep. I don't stream myself, but I'm here representing um, Casters and Castles, which is an actual play um, channel that was originally started by people in the esports scene. So that's the casters part. Um, streams uh, The main show stream on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. Um, and I do a lot of assets and art for the show as just well as being like a longtime community member. Um, we love 3D dice over there. Uh, we made character dice for all of our main cast. Um, and then when the store eventually goes up, we're going to be selling those as part of uh, community rewards and like stream loots kind of things. Um, also just launched a new actual play channel with my partner um, called Legendary Actions. We are also using 3D dice over <gasps> there because we like it so much. And oh I just tell everybody about it. So. I am amazed. I when you I mean, okay, I know you like 3D dice, but to hear you say it to everyone makes me so happy. And I just want to tell you how happy I am in return for all of the wonderful dice you've uploaded. 
They are beautiful. They are amazing. Um, if you do go to 3Ddice.com, you can go to our Marketplace link. You can't buy stuff yet, but you can add them to your wish list. We're hoping to launch the Marketplace very soon. Next month, maybe. If not, the month after. We're so close, guys. Um, and pretty much like half the dice on the featured page for th wish listing are made by Beep. And I really we're using like tonight. <laughs> and we're using them tonight. If you want to get these dice, they're only available for the next three days. You got to get them here during the stream. Exclamation point dice. And it will show you how to get them. Did that work? No, it didn't. Because of course not. But put in a, uh, let's see, let's see if it works. Maybe you have to get them tomorrow. Ah, there you go. Put in someone's name like that, and you'll get the dice. Um, you can get that share link, and you can add them. Yeah! Yay! All right. Some other uh, housekeeping items. First, while we were playing, we hit the follower goal, or maybe at the beginning and I didn't notice. Thank you, everyone, who gave a follow who came by today. I'm going to go reset that. Uh I like to be conservative with my goals and just listen to whatever Twitch tells me to do. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, and that goal, excited for me. Um, and we'll set a new one, 150 followers. Tell your friends to come by and watch, and we'll get that. Also, our Patreon. We have a Patreon. You can go by and support us. If you do are a Patreon supporter, you get some extra features. Uh, you can change the gravity in your dice roll room. You can change the lighting. You can make your own private dice and give them away. And we have a set of dice that only patrons can get access to as a thank you. And we're trying to collect $500 a month worth of Patreon subscribers so that we can expand our server footprint globally. Right now, we only have servers in the United States, but we would love to have some all over the world because we have a lot of people who play in Europe and in Asia. Um, so when we get there, that would be amazing. And um, you can support us there. And we passed halfway. We were at half, almost halfway for a while. We're getting really close. I'm, I just, I'm stunned. Um, and it appears that my chatbot doesn't like me. So so sorry there, Rams at Orange, that you couldn't get Turtles dice. They are pretty amazing dice. I'll try to fix that while people are, are talking and I don't have to pay all of the attention. Um, it's worth noting that in OBS, the D D D Dice Dice Tray browser source is the earliest, easiest browser source I've ever worked with. Oh my! Has a variable roller size based on the dimensions in OBS rather than in window, and that's so handy. Well, thank you. We were. That's my partner. We were nerding out over that, setting up the stream assets for our new actual play about how we could like shrink the window in OBS and then the dice would like, you know, they were like physics bound and it was great. Yeah, it, it is great. So thank you so much. All right. Does anyone want to mention anything else about themselves or their characters before we jump back into the game? No? Okay. Oh, we can talk about the, the fates. We should talk about the fates. Let's yeah. go over the rules a little bit. We're playing a game called The Mountain Witch. Dungeons and Dragons-ish, but very narrative-based. Everyone in the game gets to be a mini GM. When we roll dice to determine the outcome of a conflict, we're not talking about whether I swing my sword and hit the guy and stab him or hit them with my arrow. We're talking about what's at stake in the scene. It will be like, I want to capture the uh, the bandit. And maybe Chase, he wants to kill the bandit. And Nikki, she wants to interrogate the bandit. So we all roll off. The person with the highest roll, they are the one who gets to narrate the outcome of the scene. And the difference between the high roller and the second highest roller determines the degree of success. And <laughs> Turtle gets a six. And yeah. And then that person gets to narrate it. But what is going on here is that you can see points next to everybody's face, next to a name. You got Captain Seaweed, 
has gotten three trusts from Turtle because they are both pirates or used to be pirates before this mission. And the characters can spend those, those trust points to either help each other, rolling their dice together and adding it, or subtracting one from their opponent's roll. Um, and we're here on, the players are on a mission to capture Captain Bruja. We'll talk about that a little bit later after we jump back into the game, but they also each have a secret fate. Not even I know the secret fate that each character has. Only Grimbeard knows the secret fates that each character has because he handed them out. And over the course of the game, it's up to the players to use the narrative control they get from doing their roles or even just flat out introducing characters, introducing scenes, because they want to tell us about what's going on in their fate. Today, they should be foreshadowing their fate. Tomorrow, starting to reveal their fate. And on Saturday, resolving their fate. And I really hope someone has revenge. That's my favorite, because someone's going to backstab someone at the final moments as we're up against the witch. And we're not playing to find out if we defeat the witch. doesn't matter. We're playing to find out whether or not the characters band together, leave their differences aside, or cleave to their secret missions. And if you're interested in finding out what the fates are, you can type in exclamation point fate or exclamation point fates. I definitely tested that one before we started. And over the course of the stream, it's going to post them every once in a while to help you remember what they are. But the, the fates themselves, let's do this. Oh, there we go. Someone did it for me. We got desperately in love. Past Allegiance, Revenge, True Motives, Unholy Pact, and Worst Fear. Um, halfway through, we'll, you know, have some discussion. And at the end, we're going to have a poll so people, all the, the viewers, you can vote on who has which fate. It'll be pretty fun. Captain, did I miss anything? As our veteran player? No, I, I think you're good. That's awesome. All right. Jumping back in, we have all returned, and uh, George Washington is in front of you, and he says, "Thank you all. I have brought you back here because you are the you are the four I have selected to be my hand in this. Uh, I don't know how much you've read in our." in our advertisement or during our interviews, but I'm sending you to the Caribbean to stop the dreaded El Bruja. She is a pirate captain who has expanded her influence across the Caribbean, has been attacking American ships, attacking ships of all nations. And this is of grave concern to us. I want the waters to be free and waters to be safe for passage. However, some are, sp there are some rumors that she is so powerful because she possesses dark magics. Now, a man of science and reason such as myself does not believe in such things, but for people to believe that she has it means that she must be very powerful and must command great influence. There is a spy, a person, who has decided to defect from El Bruja's crew, and he has sent word to me that he will m be at a port in Florida a couple days from now, and it's up to you to go there and meet with him, and he will lead you to El Bruja's stronghold. And we are trusting upon you to capture her and to stop her and to do whatever you must. And in exchange, we will pay you an unimaginable sum, a king's ransom, a witch's ransom, if you would. Now, before we set out, I have, uh, we, the United States government will be supplying you with a ship and we'll be supplying you with a crew of some uh, Navy men. They uh, have not been fully informed of where you're headed and why. That will be 
up to you all to decide how you will dispense with that. And you will all be in charge, Captain Seaweed. I do know that you are the only captain here in the room, but men like yourself, I understand, are, uh, are want to, to be voted into their position of office. So um, after you've asked any questions which you need, I will leave you to it to decide uh, who's in charge and um, my secretary will direct you to the South sh sh Seaport where you can find your ship awaiting. Any questions? Are you providing us with the food and the necessities of the day's voyage? The, uh, the ship will be stocked for the voyage to Florida, yes. You should not be wanting well, uh, on a sea voyage, there's always some want, but the ship shall be supplied at us. Uh, ahoy then, we'll be off with it. All right. George Washington leaves you in the office where you had your interviews. So it's up to you all how, who's in charge. Ahoy, ladies. My name is Captain Seaweed, and I'd like to know how many months of moons have you been upon the seas? It's been 84 years. Oh, my. I started when I was just a young lad. Um, I, I've got loads of experience. Never been a captain wasn't my thing. Nice to have you aboard. Thank you, Captain. For me, it um, was uh, 20 years in the service and, uh, well, a few years as a boy before that. Uh, grown up my whole life on the seas. Ah, so adventure you seek. Had plenty of adventure in my day, but wouldn't say no to some more. Love to hear it. Uh, my name is Tao Xing, and I've been on the seas enough, perhaps not as long as the rest of you, but, but I feel I have enough experience to be of use on this voyage. And Tao Xing is, uh, they're a person of indeterminate gender and age. It's very hard to tell, like, are they in their mid-20s? Are they in their early 50s? It's, they, they just kind of look gaunt. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> It's a big window. <laughs> <laughs> Indeterminate every... Are you Are you a human? Are you really a person? I, I don't know. We'll have to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh-oh. Oh, Grim! Grim Beard Adventures, you just subscribed. Thank uh -huh. you. You're like my third subscriber ever. Oh, my God. Thank you. Woo! That, that is quite amazing. All right, is everybody, oh, oops, sorry. Go for it. Is everybody aware of the task at hand? We must yeah. venture to the ports of Florida. We're going to Florida. I've heard of Florida before. That's a nice <laughs> place to retire, I've heard. <laughs> also, I, I heard there was something there about the fountain of youth. Hmm. Or was it yeah. just retirement? I'm not sure. It's just, It's hard to say. Well, I have to keep my eye on you. Uh, course, there's truly a if there's truly a fountain of youth, I would also be interested in investigating that, as uh, immortality is something that we Taoists are very interested in. Mm -hmm. Yes, things uh, such as that are but a myth, and uh, you'll see when we get there, it's a uh, swamp as any other. Are you, f are you from Florida? No, but... Uh, well, during the, uh, the war, we, uh, I shouldn't talk about it. I've seen the place. Oh. Then you shall be the first mate. <laughs> yeah, I never made XO in my time, but, uh, I'll take it. You guys see, like, a, a, a turtle turn to his monkey and be like, Sorry, Artemis, the first mate position has been taken. <laughs> oh, we need someone to bat in the hatches. You'll be all right. What's his name? 
This is Artemis. Artemis. Glad to have you aboard. Uh, monkey salutes. <laughs> nice. Oh, I have no problem following along as just a regular crewmate. As long as you can stay alive, our last captain died under somewhat mysterious circumstances. Oh, never mind. I'll keep my eye on you. <laughs> mysterious circumstances. What? Can you can you tell us more? Well, they're mysterious for a reason. If I knew, then they wouldn't be mysterious. Oh, so you don't uh, you don't even know. I feel like that's what the murderer would say, but that's just me, Artemis. Yes, yes. Keep your eyes on this one. Was that loud? Was that really loud? Did you hear that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Maybe you can't hear yourself. Uh, hold on, tinnitus, guys. Bop. Bop. Oh. Okay. You know, acupuncture can help with that. Oh. 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 Well, we need to talk. Trust point. <laughs> <laughs> can I do that? I don't know when we get them out. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon That's enough. <laughs> okay. Is it only on one side? We can put you next to a cannon and even you out. <laughs> Are we near the port now? I don't like to get on the ship or do we need a journey to the port to get to our ship to get to Florida port? Oh, I mean, y you are near the port now. If okay. you would like to board the ship and meet the crew or do whatever before you set out, you absolutely can. If there's anyone in New York who wants to say goodbye to you, now is the time to introduce them and let me know who they are. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Um, hmm. I guess, like, do you want us to do a little scene of what we do before we head, head to the ship, maybe? Is that something? That's the something. Go for it. All right. Okay. So I guess, yeah, uh, Tur Turtle will, will say, well, I'll see you out the ship. I'll bring my best potato peeler. Artemis, you're supposed to batten the hatches. And then uh, Turtle will like walk out of the room um, with his uh, large driftwood staff or, you know, walking stick. It's not really a staff. He's not that, he's not that um, majestic. <laughs> um, and then I guess you'll see uh, Turtle will go to his little house um, and not, it's not a house. I guess it's more like a, of a, of a, a loft in a, uh, shipping bay where like, uh, containers and like, uh, barrels and stuff are dropped off. He has sort of like a little loft up above. Uh, it's right on the ocean, uh, with one little kind of circle window and it's just like one bed and, uh, you'll see turtle, uh, sort of just be like tidying it up before he leaves moving ever so slowly uh, with a giant tortoiseshell on his back and he sort of um, pulls out you know his uh, favorite jean cutoffs and he'll put that in a bag and then he'll pull out another pair of his favorite jean cutoffs and he'll put those in the bag uh, and then um, his third and most favorite jean cutoffs he'll uh, take those out and put those in the bag um, and then he'll look uh, kind of longingly at one picture frame over uh, his uh, bed uh, and kind of uh, give it a little nod and then uh, he'll I guess put a little sort of basket like one of those little purses that people carry little chihuahuas in sort of like that but less pink and uh, beckon Artemis to come like ride along <laughs> and Artemis will climb up his shoulder and then also kind of look back at the room longingly they're going out on another adventure All right. Anyone else want to give us a little scene about what they're doing before leaving New York? I will. Go for <clears> it. If, uh, if one were to tail Dr. Rune, Dr. Runehart down, downtown into the uh, lower city of Manhattan to a place, Francis Tavern, in fact, um, where he walks in and kind of takes his hat off and keeps his head low. As a former uh, British Navy man, he's not necessarily welcome in uh, a tavern that was so central to the American Revolution. Um, pulls up a, a stool at the bar uh, next to uh, a young woman 
<clears throat> who's there drinking, and he, you know, orders his drink, thinking about the days ahead. And uh, after a couple of breaths and a sip or two, he kind of leans to one side and says to her, I'll be gone a, f a little while, probably longer this time. She just kind of nods. Look, I know uh, I didn't support you when you first started to take part in these things, but it's been several years, and your side won after all. And not even a war can keep family apart. I promise I'll be back with uh, something to give you, hopefully. Anyway, and he just, like, drinks to stop talking. And she says, Okay, Dad. And that's the end of their conversation. <clears throat> he walks out to his uh, small temporary living space, probably a couple of blocks away, whatever he could rent, gathers his very small bag of belongings, and heads out to uh, to the ship to board with everybody else. Anyone else? No, it's fine. Oh, Captain, go first. It, okay. Um, <clears throat> so the captain's gone on many voyages and it's kind of a ritual. It's a little weird, but it helps ground him. He's at sea a lot. Um, he actually just kind of lays starfish in a dirty area with face sideways on the ground and breathes the dirt. Um, not completely right, but just gets mists of dirt. He breathes it, he tastes it, he remembers it. Um, he does that for probably longer than he should. Uh, and then he stands up, but as he stands up, he grabs a, a little couple pebbles, um, a little bit of dirt, and um, he pulls out from his, his pocket a, a extra large compass and on the bottom of it has a sort of hidden compartment um he's not trying to hide it but it's just a, that's just part of the compass and he puts some of the dirt inside of this little chamber uh in in the compass closes it back up and kind of just uh cleans his hand by putting the rest of the dirt in his pocket you know slaps it and um that's kind of his thing and he, he walks towards the ship all right beep um, Taosheng doesn't go to visit anybody in particular. They just go to, uh, I'm not sure what you would call it in the 18th century, like an apothecary or a chemist or something, but apothecary. you know, like, yeah, I guess it would be an apothecary. They, they go to a little apothecary shop. That's one of their, uh, distributors here in the Americas. Um, and also where they stay when they're in, in this part of the, of the country. Um, and you know, they start packing their belongings. Um, Taoshing is clearly somebody who's made good money in their business, um, packing very fine clothing, packing um, some personal belongings, like a set of fine uh, porcelain china uh, teaware, um, you know, just normal things for traveling. And then they start packing a, a leather doctor's bag with some not so normal stuff. Um, if anybody were there, they would see them packing a lot of bottles of mysterious substances, including things like um, uh, desiccated nightshade leaves, a bottle of mercury, opium, uh, different kinds of spirits, some made for drinking, some not, um, a very uh, fine set of silver acupuncture needles. They roll that up into um, like a little leather uh, a little leather case and pack that away. Um, yeah, and they load that onto their little trunk and uh, head for the ship. Okay, so <clears throat> you all collect together um, at the South Street Seaport in Manhattan, and I just named him William. George Washington's secretary is waiting for you out there on the docks. He sees you coming, he beckons you over, and you see a rather <clears throat> small yet seaworthy ship um, docked at the shore um, 
on the dock and he beckons you over and hello I know George Washington has sent you the ship here is stopped you'll find five able seamen aboard to help you navigate your ship um, he hands you captain a map here is the course to chart the um, Mr. Washington told me to make sure that you're going to meet, tell you to meet Mr. Beard. Roger Beard is his name, the man who uh, you are scheduled to meet. I shall not say no more in public. Uh, however, the, the name of the port you're going to is St. Augustine in Florida. It is controlled these days by the Spanish, so be on your guard. Um, if there's any last minute things that you need, Please let me know, and I'll have them put aboard your ship if I can manage it. All right. Okay. Climb aboard. Make sure you have the room you need and the food you take. We'll do inventories and head out. All right. So you head. You all pack your things onto the boat. You get your bunks, and you push off out to sea on your voyage to Florida. Um... It's going to take a couple nights for you to get there. And during the first evening, you are sailing through the ocean. And a storm comes up out of the, out of the, um, out of the sky. It is rocking your boat from side to side. And the waves are crashing up along the sides of the boat. It is going to be all hands on deck to keep this ship going the right direction and from capsizing. How are you going to try to steer your ship through this maelstrom? The music. The music is very good. The music is very good right <laughs> uh, now. Don't thank me. Thank Chase. Yeah, thank you, Chase and crew from Pocket Bar. That's great. <clears throat> Much appreciated. I'm I'm enjoying this, and thank you. <laughs> so, what are we doing, guys? How are we going to save the ship from being dashed against the shore? So, me, I am the, I am the storm. I would like to capsize your boat. Oh, oh I see. I see. Yeah. Well, you're asking someone who's from landlocked Saskatchewan in Canada <laughs> how, to, how to manage a sea storm, so I'm going to use my imagination. Um <laughs> Tasha oh. turns to Captain Seaweed and goes, this seems like something that you should be handling. <laughs> <laughs> All hands on dick. Grab the right. oysters. Um, Steer okay. the sails. Open the sails. All the way. Oh, open That's the sails. You. All the way. All Turn right. Up. All yeah, the let's way. Go. Let's go. Half mass <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> all right uh yeah you, you guys are okay. probably i'm gonna yeah i guess i'll help i'll help uh the captain try to open the sails <laughs> i don't know anything about boats guys <laughs> all right okay i'll also like to to jump in for a sec um grimbeard spent some of his nice channel points on you uh captain seaweed you got he gave you he rolled with trust so you get plus five to your next roll and he also Ooh. inspired you where you got a, a two. So if you happen to roll a one, <clears throat> you're already at a seven. Um, nice. Okay. And Turtle, you're you're assisting. So why don't you roll all together? And Turtle, maybe you want to spend some trust. I don't know. It's up to you. But Wait, I'm only... if if I spend trust, I can I can add my rule to his. Is that what it is? Uh, yes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's best this storm. <laughs> Right. Let's do it. I'll uh, spend a trust. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how, where, where I'm supposed to roll it. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good roll. Turtle got a five. I got a two. Um. <laughs> do you need me to send you the link again? Well, I tried the one earlier, but I guess that was for the, the beginning of the stream, right? And when I did that, yeah. I lost the other one. So, yeah. Okay, okay. I got you, friend. Grazie. All right. It's in our group chat on Discord. Boom. Thank you. 
You're welcome. All right, so we got Cap Grimbeard with a five for Captain plus a two. So Captain, you're at a five plus um plus turtles five. That's a, a ten against my two. You're already plus eight. What's your roll gonna be? Finally got there. Yeah, two. Hmm. This is this is like. The biggest success I've ever seen. You're at a 10. <laughs> Up 10. So, Captain, tell us how you save the ship. And you get something extra from from the storm. Ooh. Oh, okay. Double success. Um, crap. Um, I don't know how this... Quadruple success. But <laughs> I don't know how the storm's going to help us, but maybe... When I tell Turtle to release the sails, they, sails release. <laughs> they did it flawlessly uh, for the <laughs> years of experience, and the the storms, gusting winds blew us in the perfect direction, and we kind of got an extra boost, which will cut down um, on the length of the the trip, and it will also save us in supplies. And um, it 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 happened so perfectly. Well, she releases sails and I'm spinning the wheel and everything kind of just ma happened so magically. It's sort of just everyone was just like, oh, my God, like he really is ca a Captain Seaweed pirate of 20 years on the, on the ocean. You know, he's he, this, this guy knows what he's doing. All right. I think probably for that, I was hyping you up too, being like, <laughs> yes, Captain, the whole time. <laughs> Yeah. Like, just, like, not even questioning to, <laughs> to open yeah. the sails or yeah. anything. Just as there, people, swing and swing people around. People surprised me. I was like, open the sails. It, yeah, just, just like that. <laughs> good, good, good job. Over I mean, there, I just peeled potatoes, but I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Excellent. So Take it, that storm! Is that all you got? <laughs> Yeah, and then the little Artemis is like <laughs> waving his fists. <laughs> we show them, Artemis. Wonderful. So you continue your voyage down to Florida. The next evening, um, you are again awoken in the middle of the night. You hear skittering across the deck. You are, um. None of you are above decks. You're all below in your bunk. You are resting. And one of the other crew members is tending the wheel. And you hear like hundreds of little tippy taps up on up on the main deck. Mm. And mm. Um, I don't think that um, Turtle would wake up okay, turtle <laughs> with those sleeping. noises. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. He's a heavy sleeper. Uh, really heavily asleep. <laughs> Captain, yeah. something is wrong. You're, you, are, you are awake. <clears throat> uh, so I, I, I'll go to, the, go to the top of the deck to see what's, what's this noise I hear. Okay, you poke, you poke your head out <clears throat> and you see very large squid up on the deck, <laughs> many of them oh, wow. <laughs> skittering across, and they're trying to find any crack that they can to get down into the holds below. Um, and some of them, as you poke up and you come out onto the, or just, I guess you poke your head up onto the deck, um, you can see that they notice your presence, and they, they turn to come for you the uh the squid are looking for something they've come to uh try to uh find you captain <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're gonna try to attack you and bring you overboard all right is this something that one of us can jump in and help on too absolutely except so for i turtle, think at this point i don't want it to be asleep 
<laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I can't help that he's got sleep apnea. If anything's going to wake him up, it's his own snoring. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I think Tal's a light sleeper, and so they would be there, but this isn't exactly an area that they can help with. So, <laughs> um, I think at this point, you, as you like poke your head up to see these things, you hear from behind you footsteps and grumbling first and look back and see Dr. Runehart in like night uh, night clothes not again and, uh, and he <clears throat> charges forward onto the deck and sees the squids and uh, is first going to uh, cast a oh, wait how does he do this yes what, so what, what's your goal Chase what do you want to get out of this? I think I see do you want to kill the squid? Uh, I, do you want to save Cap? Do you want to rush them off the ship? You want to? What do you want to do? I think I want to. I want to deter them. I want. I want to do something that gets them to leave the ship and not be interested anymore. Okay. Okay. Any anyone else gonna assist with that? <clears throat> I mean, I don't want them to get me either. Right. What do you want? I mean, the the, the same. I'm. I. I I'm. I'm confused and baffled like what why are they after me and so many of them uh, i don't i'm not sure what's what's what is you know is the presence of this four um and if if i, if I feel that his presence the doctor is trying to help me then yeah i'm going to try to work with him and say you know all right we'll start you know talking out a plan if i want a different outcome is this where i would s spend a trust point if you wanted a different outcome, this is where you would tell me where you okay. want the scene to end, and then everyone would okay. roll off. Okay. Um, well, I guess, like, I don't, I also want to help Captain Seaweed. I don't want him to be taken, but I don't want the squid to be driven off completely. Um, Taoshing would like to, uh, ca like, dispatch some of the squid, but, you know, keep keep them here for study. Okay. Okay. So if you do want to, like, Okay, so Captain and Chase, you sound like you're on a team. You spending any trust? Do we need uh, to spend trust to work together? No, no, you just take the high roll. Yeah, no, I, I don't think we need, I don't need to spend any trust yet. Okay. Is Tao Xing going to do any betraying? Um, not betraying. They okay. they still want the squid. They want to defeat the squid, but they just want, they don't want to drive them off. They actually just want to, like, keep the corpses, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's I, roll. I do have a, I do I have a hook hand. <laughs> I do have a hook hand, and so any anything that I kind of kill is going to be stuck to me for a second, right? So okay. I'll just like throw, flop it on the deck, yeah. and hit the next one, pretty much. Yes. So I don't know if uh, Taoshing's goals are necessarily like counter to the overall goal of to help Captain Seaweed. They just want the squid corpses. All right, let's roll off. <clears throat> oh, I get a five. We got a one. We got a two. Am I also rolling to help? You're or? also rolling. Yeah. All right. So you you're all working together. Go for it. Three. Okay. I'm Not the great. high roller. I'm I'm up two, so I get a mixed success. That means I get what I want, but I don't get everything that I want. Uh, I have to get a little bit as well as you. Usually, when you're a player, you get what you want, but you take a wound. Um, We'll talk about wounds when we get there. So my goal, the squid's goal, was to take Captain and drag him off the ship. The squid swirl around you, Captain. They're climbing up onto you, body, and on your feet, and they've yanked your legs, and you've lost your, your footing, and they've gotten you, thrown you overboard. The ship is still sailing in its direction, and the squid have all followed and all are swarming off the ship along with you. So the squid have left the ship, but so has Captain Seaweed. Okay, so... What do you do I, now, team? Um, I, Taoshing's gonna go try and find a rope or something to throw overboard that the captain can grab onto. I, um... I have a commandeering ring, and, and I, I use... Hand gestures in the water and yell um, left side sails to bring the, the whole ship sails to turn to the left so that it just starts turning 
uh, starts doing like a 360 uh, to turn okay. back in my direction. Captain wants to turn the ship around with his magical ring. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. I think when the ship finishes turning around, I'll throw the rope down into the okay. general area where he fell. Okay. The squid are gonna try uh, to drag mm -hmm. you under the water and try to start and try to drown you, or we'll see what happens. Depends on who rolls right. Oh. Oh, I just rolled a two d six by accident. Whoops. Uh, what do you guys want me to do? Want me to reroll? I yeah. think that's the fairest because yeah. Fair. Oh, I yeah. got a five. Okay, versus. I got a five. I got I a five, and someone inspired you. Yeah, yeah. Sethers, thanks. For Sethers. That. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Didn't really help, sadly. Um, but so we're tied. Let's roll off. One more time. One more roll. Okay. One more roll. I got a two. One. Got a one. Okay. <sighs> Partial success. <laughs> I don't, you don't get what you want. I don't, I only get a little bit of what I want. Okay. So. This um, is looking bad. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the ship just keeps a going and Taoshing, you run back. They throw the rope to try to get it to captain. And he reaches out and he just misses it as the ship continues to sail past captain. You're not. I mean, you're getting pulled down by these squid and the ship's going away, but you're uninjured. You, the, you're you keeping your head above water. I think. Can I Can I jump in with Turtle waking yes. up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think Turtle wake will, oh, will conveniently wake up like a... <laughs> and Is it'll it... be like Artemis will be like shaking Turtle and he's like, what Artemis? Oh, the captain's taken overboard with a bunch of squid. Oh my God. Um, and then he's going to uh, get up and <laughs> very slowly, I guess, <laughs> make his way to the ship. And I really feel like at this point he was making his way back before the ship even started to turn around. And so he's just he's just getting there as soon as the captain is sinking into the sea. And then Turtle will see this and uh, take his. Um, hold on. Yeah. Take his staff or his, his walking stick and like hit it on the deck twice, like bump, bump. Uh, and to everybody else, I don't think anything really changes for you. But for Turtle, everything slows everything but him and so he like walks over to the rope kind of pulls it up ties it around his waist and then just sort of uh, like throws his body overboard using the turtle shell to roll himself off the edge and falls into the water after the captain and then he's going to try and scoop the captain up that's his goal so save the captain all righty um, captain beautiful yeah. All right. All right. So roll again. Squid. You get a four. Captain. Oh, Any boy. Trust? You spend in trust. Um, I feel like this is bad roll after bad roll after bad roll. I'm going to spend trust so I can not die so quickly. <laughs> That's right. a good call. <laughs> so let's see your roll. We got um, a five. No. Ooh, hot dice. So to spend trust, how do I incorporate that with my roll? You just roll. Just to, you add just, it to the five. I just, I, I, I already deducted it. Okay, well, six plus two, mixed success. So, Turtle, you can save Captain, but he'll get injured. Or mm -hmm. you can give the squid a little bit of what they want, but all they really want is to drag Captain to the bottom of the ocean. Mm. Or you can you definitely save in the Captain, but there's a complication. So, it's to you. Um... Complic like complication with the captain specifically, or can it be a complication with me? It could be a complication with you. Someone could take a wound. Taking a wound means you either get a negative one uh, for the rest of the session, oh. or uh, you disable one of your powers. Actually, not until the rest of the session, until we reevaluate trust next. Um, okay. And or you could disable one of your powers until then, like maybe. Uh, I don't know. Your compass gets broken. <clears throat> the captain's magical compass. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
then I think, um, okay, sorry, sorry, Cap. This is all I can think about because I just thought about it at the start. Is that when Turtle's mm-hmm. saving you, um, the squid are grabbing onto you. I'm gonna give the squid something they want, which is a piece of you, and that's your badass hook hand. Oh, um, yeah. Ouch. Mm. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a magical item? <laughs> All right. uh, the no. magic is in your heart <laughs> correct okay good um yeah and uh uh well turtle was gonna land on you so i really feel like not having negative one <laughs> is better um so yeah turtle turtle lands in the water next to you uh the squid are wrapping their arms and tentacles all around and like they grab onto that hook and they really got a good hold on it and as turtle like kind of wraps a feeble arm around you and says hold hold me captain seaweed hold me um and you can grab onto him and his giant uh buoyant turtle shell keeps both of you afloat despite the strength of the tiny squid arms um the the, you know hundreds of them perhaps um yeah and 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 i guess hope turtle turtle's like pull us up Please, please. Um, Tao Xing will hear the call and start pulling on the rope, and I guess probably just for Runehart to also come and help because Tao Xing's <laughs> kind of skinny, not not really good at physical labor stuff. I heard, had heard the captain say "go left," and he's yelling to the other the other. We have more crew, right? That are yeah. There's like five part, other. He's yelling to the other crew. He meant to port, to port. <laughs> to try to get the other crew to, like, go with what the captain wanted. <laughs> then he'll, he'll help pull the rope. That's fine. Nice. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so captain has been saved. Hook hand has not been saved. <laughs> Squid have been banished from the ship. Gone as quickly as they came. You all return to your bunks. You get the rest of the night's sleep and you wake up in the morning and you're getting ready for the day and you all notice, except you, Dr. Runehart, that there's something of yours that's gone missing. You could have sworn it was there when you went to sleep, but it's gone now. Uh, What was it? Let's start with you, Captain. And it's not the hook hands, in addition to your hook hand. Oh, wait, I thought I thought you said Dr. Runehart. He still has all his stuff. It's the rest of you who are missing something. Oh. oh. Mm. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm... I have uh, a satchel with several sort of treasure maps that I, I've collected or made over the years. And uh, I keep it with me in case I'm ever in the vicinity of, of these places and uh, they're, they're all missing. The whole satchel itself is gone. And even the, the extra dirt that I, I collected before we got on board, I, I had stashed in some in there and it's, it's all gone. And so I'm not just frustrated that I've, I've lost my hook hand. I've lost my only other possessions. Uh, and, and, and I have, you know, I don't, I'm not used to not having my hook hand. So it's, it's, it's even more frustrating trying to dig around and look for it. That's my, my current state. What is Tao Xing missing? Uh, let's see. Tao Xing is missing one of it's not part of their regular alchemical ingredients. It's a little it's a little silk bag um that was full of powdered opal. Ooh, interesting. Ooh. And um they don't they don't seem as visibly frustrated as Captain losing his stuff, but you can see there is a a look of concern on their face over losing this item. 
What if turtles went missing? Uh, his second favorite pair of cutoffs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, Artemis, I swear I, I put them in this bag and now they're gone. And you, you always said they look so good on me. I know I have my favorite, but these were your favorite. Who took my shorts? <laughs> good question. Can I do huh. a quick scene with Captain Seaweed? Of course. Um, it Tushing notices that Captain Seaweed is really upset over losing the the hook hand, um, and so they are going to, uh, and this. I, I don't know how Captain Seaweed is going to take it. It might seem like a joke, but uh, Taoshing is offering this with 100% sincerity. Um, they approach Captain Seaweed um, and they say, uh, I noticed that your, your hook hand is missing and I, well, this can in no way replace such a personal item. I thought it might be helpful to you. And they open a little, um, a little, like, it's like a little dining set. And inside there is a very lovely ornate um, kind of like oversized bronze fork, like a serving fork. <laughs> and they they offer this in place of their of a uh, Captain Seaweed's hook hand. And they're looking at uh, looking at Captain Seaweed very expectantly because this is a sincere gift. They they genuinely think this is a good replacement for your hook hand. I've never had such a valuable utensil as a as a hand before. Are you sure you don't mind departing with this? Oh yes, it's it's very it's fine. It's part of our it's one of our imports. Um, but you know, I don't know what use we'll have for it on this voyage. So I thought you might enjoy it. Well, it is gold, so I do like me gold. Uh, I'll give it a try. Thank you. I, I'll take it and yeah. I, I, I don't know how he's gonna attach. I didn't think that far ahead. But. Yeah, I, I do, you don't happen to have a yeah, block of wood or leather straps. I might be able to append this uh, somehow. I I actually probably do have the leather straps. Ah, I've done something similar in the past. With the, it wasn't a hook. It was like a needle. Yeah, so That's I think right. uh, Taoshin, we get like little, you know, the kind of thing you'd use to make like a, a tourniquet. Um, something like that, and just helps attach it to the stump. <laughs> What'd you call it? Um, it's just a very fine fork. Uh, thank and you. Know, perhaps you. Perhaps you can think of a more intimidating name for it. Yes. Trident. <laughs> a trident, yes. Very yes. appropriate. <laughs> oh, I'll have to give it a name. Okay, so what about this, um, <clears throat> Dr. Runar not missing anything? How does anyone feel about that? Do, right. Does everybody know that we're all missing stuff except for Dr. Runehart? What did the squids take from you, Doctor? <laughs> oh, we do now. Take, uh, <clears throat> well, yes, my, uh, well, a, a bit of pride. <clears throat> Excuse me, I lost my hand, my maps. What is it you lost? Uh, perhaps I uh, simply take better care of my my possessions. Uh, <laughs> after all, being a uh, you know living a life of discipline will do things like that for you. I look. I look. Captain looks at the other two. Uh, just to see what what their faces are telling me. I think uh, Turtle's face is aghast. And if you look over at Artemis's, so is it. It's like, oh, <laughs> the little monkey's face is just like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> uh, Taoshing doesn't look overly bothered by like the kind of like, I guess like insult, backhanded insult. <laughs> <laughs> but um but they are concerned uh, how they're gonna replace the bag i'm see we just is, did not like that comp that comment at all um 
but knows we're stuck on a journey for a long time together, so won't make too much of a fuss. However, I will mumble under my breath and wave my ring and say, Starboard. And the sail turns and, and it kind of knocks him down. Uh, not in a in a harsh, you know, very extreme way, just kind of knocks him down. Captain Runeheim, oh. you take it oh. or you want to roll off? Oh. oh. Yeah, let's let's roll off because I, yeah. I have... <laughs> I, I don't think think if Runehart had his way, that would go a little differently. All right, all right, let's roll. Three. I see a three. Oops, I didn't mean to roll more than one. Three. All right, roll on again to tie. I can just use my second, my accidental second roll there as a one on my four. Four. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Captain Seaweed, you get a full success. Uh, it, it, it it just knocks him down onto like coiled up ropes and, and barrels that were just you know storage area on top of the ship, and and that's that's all I wanted to leave it at. I I was uh, he's very mad because he he thinks of himself as a prized veteran of the seas, and that comment made him feel like he was trying to be belittled, and he. Wanted to show a little bit of authority, a little bit of spaz, you know, uh, and and just it was like you know, port side, and just sh- knocks him down, and I walk into captain's quarters. Oh, nice. Okay, I think this is a good spot to uh, pause and reevaluate mm. our trust. So <laughs> yeah, okay. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna refresh everyone's trust, and I mean I don't know who wants to start, but what we'll do is we'll go around and. Yeah, oh, Grimcrest doesn't trust you, Nikki. Uh-oh. Actually, let's, start <laughs> hey! with you. let's start with you, Nikki, because you were very adamant about adding trust to someone already. So Yeah! Yeah, tell us how you feel, and if you're gonna, what you're allowed to do is add plus one to the trust you've given out, or subtract as many as you want from each individual person. Uh, I would like to add plus one to Taojin. Uh, because yeah. I'm assuming at this point that maybe perhaps uh, they did do an acupuncture treatment on Turtle. And he was like, oh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah, we I totally could have done yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, he's very grounded now, Turtle is, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, did a really good point. Like, you, know, you know, like, what is it? Large intestine four here. That's for uh, headaches, if I recall. Um <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I guess, probably to Captain Seaweed, because uh, it seems like uh, Turtle has uh, stepped into um, second mate. <laughs> is, that, is that a role? <laughs> I guess, or at now. least with. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it has really in, it has really taken to Captain's guidance on the uh, sea. He sees that he's like a seasoned captain. So. Uh, and trusts him. Uh, we'll take one away from uh, that <laughs> Runeheart for that snooty comment. <laughs> and let me tell you, Turtle's going to be walking around this ship gossiping about Runeheart now. <laughs> uh, and getting all the deets from the other people about what they lost and what, and like figuring out that maybe you really didn't lose anything at all. Like, you know, like it really, and then is kind of suspicious, I guess. He'll be, he'll be not, he's, he's an old man. He's not shy about it. Every time you come by, he grumbles. <laughs> uh, doctor, to to- doctor, of what? I wonder. It's nothing important. <laughs> he didn't even tell us. Probably like something silly. Grass. <laughs> doctor of grass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Runehart, how about you next? I think uh, as Dr. Runehart, you know, paces the ship, inspecting the haphazard way that the ropes are coiled and things like that, um, I think probably would trust Tao Xing more for their apparent, uh, almost seeming discipline as well. I feel like at least... As a player, the way that it sounded like you were describing them, like packing all of their different things in, in very orderly fashion, I feel like Runehart would have uh, uh, respected some some sense of orderliness there. Um, and 
I don't I don't think he necessarily distrusts anyone anymore at this point. Do I do I have to nope. take trust away at all? Okay. You don't. You can leave think, it as it is. I think everything else will we'll leave it as it is. All right. How is Tao Jing feeling? Uh Tao Jing likes everybody here. They're having a great time. Okay. <laughs> uh, they 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 weren't offended by Dr. Runehart's comment again. Um I think because um they are from China and at this point in time most of the western trade actually was with the british they're kind of used to that like british affectation so they don't they didn't really take offense to it they're like they they think that's fine um so it, it, like is it okay to give out trust to everybody is that yeah, like uh, totally okay. kind of cheesing the game okay yeah so they're uh you know just they're fine with dr runehart um they they like turtle turtles uh, a character um they find them you know old person charming and yeah they probably did that like little acupuncture treatment um, and then Captain Seaweed seems to be quite competent so far, so they respect that. So plus one for everybody. All right, Captain. All right, so I I, I did feel a little bit of uh, you know bumping heads with Doctor Runehart, but mm. that that just could mean he's a butthole, right? <laughs> but he did try to help save my life, you know. And so it's like the end state. He is trying to help me. It, he just might have a terrible personality or, you know, and, and, and it might not be that bad. It's just, I'm also feel as I'm the captain of the ship. I, I have to assort some sort of, you know, captain role and be, be in charge. Right. So, um, I, I'm not going to take away trust. I think I actually will add trust cause he did try to help save me. Um, and then obviously with that in mind, uh, turtle did save me, obviously trust point and losing, I don't know my second prize possession, right? Cause I think my first prize possession would be my peg leg. Uh, that would be worse losing, uh, than my hook hand. Uh, so, but with losing that, uh, Tao replaced it. Uh, and then offering nothing not, or not requesting anything in return. Um, even though I was, it was a little weirded out that it was a fork, uh, <laughs> but it still can do damage. It is possibly made of real gold. And so, uh, I'm, I'm going to take it, and I'm taking it as a win, so she, everybody gets um, trust points. It's probably like gold-plated bronze. Yeah. Well, I'll, I could, I'll bite it later. I didn't want to do it in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Captain is not skilled in metallurgy. He's skilled in ship allergy. Hey, it's, it's actually probably better because pure gold would be soft. The gold-plated bronze better weapon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's Maybe true. real gold-plated bronze, yeah. I, I, might hook, I might hook them in different directions. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know. Uh-oh. Sounds like you need a new hero forge, mini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can he carry a big falk? I'm sure they've got a giant for I've seen I've seen like, you know, mermaids with tridents. Got it. It's gotta be. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna start off with like I have no clue about any I have no suspicions about anyone's fate at this point. I don't know if anyone does have suspicions. I don't know, man, but I just know that Dr. Runehart's up, that bad dad, <laughs> which I really like. I love that. It's a good, very good story feed, but I'm logging that away. I also said Captain Gets Dirt is my notes for that. <laughs> Runehart emotionally repressed and then Zhao Jing poison. So. so what I'm hearing is Runehart is desperately in love. With his estranged child, right? And 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 Tao Xing is probably uh, like unholy pact. Wants the witch to resurrect the dead captain out of uh, oh. remorse. Oh, I'm loving I, this. I was thinking maybe revenge because I feel like with the needling, she could kill somebody easily, or the the potions, she was poison. Yeah, I was thinking revenge, but unholy pact is also fair. Mm. Uh, option that's true but i have additional information that the whole uh you know mysterious circumstances of the captain that was that was written down on the character sheet before the fates were handed out well that was it mm. was oh. yeah oh. it was oh. hmm. uh captain i have no clue i don't know man <laughs> there's some stuff there like what what do you need to, to get revenge on the kraken mm -hmm. 
Ooh, what do you, know? you need? Kill. Yeah. What so. about a gigantic kraken killing magical boat that's cursed by the, the witch? Unholy pack sounds like. Unholy packs. <laughs> We shall see. We shall. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. right. Any any more speculations? We haven't heard from you, Jace, and your speculations. I'm I'm still thinking, but I I don't I feel like we don't have enough information about everybody to really know. Mm. All right. I'm going to. Uh... So let's jump back into it then. So. The next morning, after uh, Captain's done uh, storming into his office, the ship continues down <coughs> the ocean, and um, the five the five um, crewmen who were assigned to the boat uh, by George Washington and the government, um, they're milling about, they're talking to each other. Captain's in the captain. Uh, I don't know what they call it. Cabin, captain's cabin. That's what we're going to call it. Captain's quarters. Captain's quarters. He's in the captain's quarters. And the rest of you are out on the deck and you see this happening. And um, you look over and you see one of the men pound on the captain's door and demands that the captain come out on the deck to talk. Captain, we need to have a word with you. I step in and say, crewman, you know, it's uh, not your, your place to directly address the captain. What, what's the issue? The issue is that we, we were not in, we don't want to work for a pirate. We found out, we figured out who this guy was. We've heard stories of Captain Seaweed. Nobody properly introduced him. We've, you know, under threat of not having a a, pos- a position anymore, told that we need to, to go on this mission. We're Navy men. You're a Navy man. We want you to be captain instead, Dr. Runehart. We've heard that on pirate ships, they get to vote their captain. We didn't get a chance to vote. We just got told that we had to be here. In In contrast to the banging, Dr. Runehart will, like, very lightly tap on the captain's door and say, Captain, crewman wishes to speak with you. <clears throat> I, I take time to put on my my hook fork, hook trident. <laughs> um, I open the door. Yes. Your captain. Seems we, it seems we have an issue of... Uh, hierarchy here and uh they're muting they're all muting <laughs> <laughs> thank you tortoise <laughs> Tart- i see all right i've had this happen long ago and uh, the best way to settle it is to pick your strongest man and we'll do right here right now And whoever loses jumps off the ship. Okay. All right. Captain, who do you suggest is our strongest man? Well, me, of course. <laughs> That's our <laughs> captain. <laughs> That's him. While this in, is in... happening, Taoshing is making tea in the background, which may or may not become relevant later. But I just oh. want you to know that that's happening. Runehart, like, sees that and very much approves t is yes um, <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> perfect time to make tea there's always time for tea can i can i use one of my powers in of preparation course. for this duel of course uh, i would like to use the power i named uh do not touch the glass and uh, uh essentially uh imbue our captain with the the mountain witch equivalent of like mage armor or like shield of faith oh, okay. uh, in prep for this duel 
Okay. Okay. So However, that may work. The way that's going to work is either you, <clears throat> that will be you rolling on his side. And if you want to spend a trust on this, it will add to his roll. Yeah. Happy to yeah. do that. Okay. 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 Can Turtle also get in on this too to help? Turtles <laughs> are all going to help. But we can only We're spend all in one, favor. But we can only spend one trust. So. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So highest you, roll wins if we just all roll. Highest roll wins. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll wait, actually. Four. Okay. And do I roll two or is it just yeah, you roll. adding the. You roll and that adds to Captain's roll. You got a four. I got a five. You guys got an eight. Nice. And up three. So at up three against a. Uh, a random uh, person you could captain if you want you can kill this man how does the duel go um well i was it's a perfect time to try out my hook fork or hook trident um and so he he, he has like a whatever weapon he's using a sword um, those little pirate swords. Well, he's not a pirate. He's a Navy guy, right? So there's a Navy sword. And we, you know, we, we battle it out for like 10, 15 minutes where I was able to capture the sword within the the, the fork, right? And, and and throw it down on the board. And then I use my peg leg and I hit him as he falls to the ground. And I th push my, my fork to his throat. And I ask him, does he yield? Um, does he yield? Of course he... I say, yeah, he yields. Um, and then I ask him, I says, either we can end this now or you can do as we promised and jump, walk the plank. The choice is yours. He, he can walk the plank. That was the, that was the agreement. That was the agreement. You want him to walk the plank? Yeah. Okay. Plank's already out there. Turtle's already like putting it out, <laughs> like in the background. Walk here, Plank. Now, you asked for this, not I. Okay. Um. A deal's a deal. A fair is fair. He dives off, off the plank, into the water. And you just leave him behind. I do, but I don't care what the crew does. Well, he has he has jumped and com completed his task. You you get it's up to you guys. Either split his shares or grab them. Uh, Tushin comes up and has the tray of tea and just kind of looks over the edge at and that guy and then looks at uh, the captain and goes. Is it going to be a problem if we are shorthanded on the rest of our trip? Not at all. I can make the voyage myself. All right. Taoxing shrugs and then tea, anybody? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. of course. <laughs> I've had tea in such a quiet moment. It's grand. The, uh... Runehart will. Good. R Runehart will also say to the other the other sailors watching, "Go grab your crewman. We, you may, you may get him now. He's done his duty. And uh, if they want to save him, he'll just kind of encourage it and be like, this is pirate stuff, not navy stuff. Go do what you need to do.' Okay, okay. And drink tea. Okay. Turtle cool. has got like a bag of like like fish guts and stuff that he was like throwing into water to lure <laughs> sharks. <laughs> he was like, oh oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay, you're taking it back. I mean, we can yeah. roll for it. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the, the the not exiled crew go uh throw a rope and dive into the water with a rope around around a waist to uh go and retrieve the formerly mutinous crew member um and bring him back back aboard. Any uh last words from the uh with the crewmate as he comes back aboard, Dr. Runehart or anyone? You've learned your lesson. Indeed we yeah. have. 
indeed we have. <laughs> All right. So you Did you hear that, Artemis? That sounds like it's not over. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over. All right, okay. You continue to oh. sail. Oh. Sorry. Did uh, I jump if, ahead too quickly? Coming back. Sorry. I, I didn't. Um, you know, if we want to avoid the problem of mutiny in the future, I might have a solution for this. Ooh. I. And uh, Taoxing is going to uh, make another poor... Uh, no, how many crewmen are there? There's five? Five, yep. It's going to go ahead and pour five cups of tea and then add a little something to it and serve it to them. Okay. And say, please, please drink up. The crew uh, kind of... I don't know what the right word here is. Not very confidently takes the tea. They seem a little sheepish for having uh, lost their gambit. And they, they take the tea and they uh, they take a sip and they, they, they drink the tea. Um, so the, the tea uh, was combined. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the mood is kind of tense. Um, so the tea was combined with one of uh, Taoxing's powers, which is the gray elixir. Um, mm -hmm. It's an alchemical elixir that they can use uh, to make people forget certain memories. Um, okay. And so with the elixir and with the, under, with the power of hypnotic suggestion, they are going to tell the crew, um, this captain, Captain Seaweed is not a pirate. You are mistaken. They are a Navy man, and there is no need for this mutinous behavior in the future. There is nothing wrong here. All right, let's roll this off. Does this work? <gasps> I got a six. Uh -oh. oh, man. Okay, we can't We can't help once you've rolled, can we? Uh, yeah, you want to help? Go for it. Wait, should I not roll yet? Am I waiting for help? Oh, no, wait, I can yeah. spend trust, too, to up my roll. Well, someone else has to spend trust to help you. Oh, I can't do it on my own roll. No, nope. no. Nope. Okay. Turtle, you gonna help? I don't know how Turtle can help. Yes, inspires. Yes, way to oh! go, Seth. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Anybody oh, else wait, got an inspire? Is... Hey, chat. Why don't we just call it to chat? Chat. <laughs> help us <laughs> out. Was that somebody else rolling? Because I don't think I touched the button. That yet. wasn't. No, no, that... no, that was chat. They spent their channel points. Oh, okay. So, so, so okay, chest nice. is firing. That's what that does. Oh, Ooh. we got another. We got okay. We're at three. Okay. Nikki, are you gonna try to help and add something, or I is someone willing I to spend fifteen hundred channel points? I don't know how turtle would help. Control? I don't know how turtle will help. I just can't figure you, it out. Like, Hart, you want to change time and help? Um, Spending chest. I'm not sure. I'll spend trust, well, I but I don't know I how many one. I have because okay. the two's on it. Okay, go ahead. I figured that out. I figured out how, <clears throat> sorry, I figured out how Turtle can help. Yes, I'll spend a trust to add my role. Uh, yeah. Turtle will, um... <laughs> well, I guess like this will take a day, <laughs> but it'll hopefully convince them we'll fashion a Navy uniform for Artemis. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a dumb idea. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, actually, this monkey here, they are the captain, so there's no need to mutiny. <laughs> you can see they have the uniform and everything. Let me see your captain. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, like, I guess maybe also at the same time, because he's a quartermaster, so he should have some skills in in tailoring and sewing and stuff like that. That's uh, you know, okay. um, and so he'll he'll also sew some you know patches on uh, a captain's okay. uniform to make it look more official uh, over the next few days. Um, saying, "Oh, we lot we for we for <laughs> his original outfit was getting dry cleaned." <laughs> All right, so I got a six, you got an eight. You're up to that's mixed success. You get what you want. But there's a price. You take a wound, disable a power, something like that. So, um, Nikki, you were the high roller. You can start off with the uh, description or, you know, beep. You can take it. <laughs> to you. Can I okay. hand this description off? Yeah, well, beep, how about you start? Go for it. <laughs> Go uh, 
So what what are the options? Oh, um, what's the downside? You could take a wound, which means that uh, you get a negative one on your rolls until the end mm -hmm. of the stream, or disable one of your powers. So like maybe your gray elixir is spent and you have to re invigorate it for next time and that'll be you won't be able to use that for the rest of the this sitting um, um yeah you, i'll go ahead and i'll go ahead and oh sorry what's the other or option? or there could be some other narrative thing that's in the favor of the crew oh uh, sorry in favor or against the crew because it's in favor negative. of the crew oh. right so it, it's oh, of the crewman of the, yeah. of the crewman not us yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> i think it would be i don't know if is this a positive for them? Well, I guess it's negative for us because now they're not gonna directly listen. They wouldn't directly listen to Captain Seaweed. Could could I actually convince them that the monkey is the captain? Sure. And so and so they will take orders only. They they take their orders from the monkey now. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's amazing, actually. <laughs> Artemis, your dream is coming true. You are the captain now. You are the captain now. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, you gave a little speech about why the monkey was the captain. Could you repeat it for me just so I, uh, I'm on the same page? Oh, for, for me? In character, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, that was sort of a throwaway joke, but actually I think that's a much funnier outcome. Um, he says, oh, well, it's like, you... You are all mistaken. This man, this this man here, he is not the captain. And gestures to Artemis, like this this is your captain. They have been the captain all along, and there is no need to mutiny. They are clearly not a pirate. The the, the crew looks over at Artemis wearing his navy captain's uniform, and they're like, hmm, that must have been why this was so secretive. I wonder where I wonder where the well, they found this intelligent monkey. Hmm. It's a magic it's monkey. Don't, don't worry about it. Please drink drink more tea. That will help clear your mind of this confusion. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. This is such wonderful tea. All right. Are we settled? <laughs> okay, so the crew is taking orders from the monkey. How do you feel about that, Captain? Uh, <laughs> as long as the things that need to happen get done, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't really matter. This is actually probably a worse outcome for Captain Seaweed. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> it really is. Uh, I don't know who those guys are anyways. Uh, whatever. Oh. Okay. All right. So, you continue to sail, and you have, you have made it to Spanish waters. You're coming up onto the port where you're supposed to be meeting Mr. Beard. And... As you pull into the cove, there are two ships. And you can see that these ships are flying the Pirate Jack of La Bruja. It's a black flag with a white witch's broom across the side. And as you approach, one of the ships turns towards you to attack. They have been, um, I, I skipped a moment. You can see them as you're approaching they're shooting their guns towards the shore. They're bombarding the port town that is that is here, the one where you're supposed to be finding Mr. Beard. They have, you can only suspect that they have tracked him as he tried to escape with the map. As you come in sight, as they notice you, one of the ships, the Evergreen, turns towards you. The other two, the La Montagna and the Ten Rivers turn away and um, break off their attack on the port. Um, how are you going to uh, approach this? You got a ship coming at you, um, and you can see as you peer across the deck one of um, one of La Bruja's uh, uh, officers um, standing aboard, and he's firing a gun in your direction it's not shooting bullets it's shooting fire hmm mm. they're shooting fire fire he's got a flamethrower okay a that's flame okay thrower. thank you for clarifying i was like so is it like a flamethrower it sounds like a flamethrower flame yeah <laughs> Mm. 
Hmm. Mm. I don't have any big powers, guys. Yeah, um, Tasha says, I'm going to go below deck now. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the crew says, Artemis, Ooh. what shall we do, Captain? What Artemis is, is Artemis is giving orders, man. He's, he's like manning the cannons, you know, like, you know, full to port. So like we're hanging, we're like dropping the anchor to like twist the ship to like aim our guns in the direction. I think Artemis is giving some pretty stellar orders actually right now. Um, not going to lie. Nice. Does Artemis um, speak English? No, he's very good at charades. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All the orders are charades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Um, so Did the flames I, I... get on us. Say it again. The flames are they are they on the ship or they're just kind of like we're getting close. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's frame the scene. The guy on the ship, his name's Candlestick Jack. He wants to burn your ship to the ground. All right. Or to the sea. Thank you. Can we can we just play out that scene of yeah, like actually we're... rolling to see whether yes, or not yes, we fire what cannons? Do you, what do you want to do? <laughs> All right, yeah, let's do right. it. Let's fire the freaking cannons, guys. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to try to capture Jack? You want to destroy his ship? You want to run him off? What do you? What, what's the plan? What's the goal? Do we have a history check on him? Do we know him? Uh, yeah. So he, he. Do you know him? You've heard of him. He is one of um. La Bruja's officers and goes by the name Candlestick Jack. He, you know, you've heard the nursery rhyme, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. Oh, yeah. that Jack Candlestick. Ah, yeah, 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 the, nursery the nursery rhyme, Jack rhyme, Candlestick. Jack Candle the got... ca Jack Candlestick. Oh, yes. man. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe <laughs> well, not the, but off. at least that's how he got his nickname because of his, his musket that can shoot fire and light things on fire. Um, and... Mm. Yeah, he, we have a candlestick jack in the navy. Got his nickname a different way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think yeah. I think we'll probably try and I think I don't know, Captain. Uh, I don't know about you, but pirate ways is usually to commandeer the ship, and um, usually you commandeer the crew too. You know, as much as you can because they're warm bodies. But um, hey, more the merrier. Uh, okay. Um. All right. Okay. So two for commandeer the ship, one for duck undercover. Is Taoshing still uh, on that plan? And what about you, uh, Doctor Runehart? Uh, Runehart uh, says that monkey's got discipline and starts uh, following orders. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. Um, perfect. Alrighty. Uh, All right. All right, anyone spend in trust? Ooh, I got a one. This is going to go bad for me. Who's rolling for the thing? I think we're all rolling if we're all on the side of cannons and commandeering the ship, right? Yeah, and then we unless, get to take the highest roll. Unless someone doesn't actually want to commandeer the ship and would rather try to destroy the ship, you want a different outcome? Oh, let's commandeer Capture it. Jack Sounds to interrogate great. him, maybe. Mm -hmm. Kill Jack to send La Bruja a message. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it makes sense to capture, like we were saying before. Capture the ship. Do you want to roll in here? Because then I think whoever wins the roll gets the yeah. narrative, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, you guys are only up one. No one's coming to your no ships with those rolls. Okay, we got a three. Okay, so Jace. Yes. Full success. To you how does it go um down? as as the, the the monkey is miming orders and you know raise the sails lower the sails which look very similar um <clears throat> at runehart is kind of running around trying to like seeing crew members misinterpret the signals he's like no 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 you didn't see <laughs> this way and and like correcting them <laughs> on the correct interpretations of the charades maybe even mixing in a little bit of uh of wisdom but mostly the monkey's got it right and i think we uh we does our ship have have cannons can we like use those to disable the other ship and and sure. come come alongside so we 
we fire holes and knock their masts down and come alongside and and uh with the with our overbearing numbers and um and just the the sheer sight of us i think we overwhelm them and get the enemy crew to surrender including uh the man himself candlestick, candlestick. okay so you have candlestick you're on uh, the ships are side by side grappling hooks ropes tied them together um yeah the uh magical flame throwing musket is laying on the deck and you got candlestick jack bound there and jack says to you you might have captured me you might have captured the ship but you will you will not find you will not find la bruja's lair she has terrible magics she sent us to find a deserter we might have failed at that mission, but we will not fail at protecting, protecting her. She is, she, she is our captain, and we must do as she wishes. Yeah, but where is she? You didn't hear me. I just told you I wasn't telling you. <laughs> I will oh. take this to my grave. Hold on. Throw me to the, throw me to the deep, but I will never tell. Dionysus, sorry. Ba ba. <laughs> Okay. You said you're looking for a deserter? Yes. A mem a former member of La Bruja's crew. He has um, uh he's tried to leave and you, you do not leave. We tracked him here uh, to this port. And uh when we couldn't find him we decided that if we destroyed the whole port, that um, he would he would die in the bedlam. Well, what's his name? His name is Roger Beard. <gasps> I don't think there's any poker face on Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just turns to, you know, Captain and, and Runehart and, and uh, Tao and is just like, what did you do? <laughs> How many people would you send out for this watch or beard? Uh, we sent three ships. Did you not see us? This is it? For one man, this is quite the armada. So I, I would like to now kill everybody that's here looking for a Roger Beard. Whoa. Um, on the ship or in the port town? Well, the ship, he said three ships. Yeah, so two ships have left. Yeah. Calmadeard so, one, two have escaped, yeah. one's the here. Yeah. So you want to start killing crew until they give it up. Yeah. Okay. Anyone going to stop that or anyone going along with that? Clearly, the crew um, doesn't want to get killed one by one to give up. So the crew is going to try to roll to keep their mouths shut despite the physical and mental toll. Hmm. Any any chance that in our interrogations we find some kind of documents that uh, the uh, candlestick may have on him? The answer to that could be yes, if you're the high roller. Ah. Mm. So is Runehart like competing with seaweed for this? Yes. Yeah. Ah. Gotcha. Okay. And with the the crew who are <clears throat> trying to keep their secret. So you're trying to get documents. Yeah. yeah before you're done see. killing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to I want I my intention would be to <clears throat> discover some kind of document that uh like a map or something that may lead us back to the lair that that uh so, candlestick is trying not to give up. So we're we're still out in the open sea, right? Uh you're in a a cove, like a port 
Um, oh, okay. Harbor. So throwing Harbor. them throwing them overboard, they probably still survive. So then they would. Um, Dramatic though, it's uh, you know, it's got good flair. Maybe throw them overboard with like their feet tied. <laughs> that's like a fifty yeah. fifty. Um, yeah, Actually, that's what we it... could. We could always poison them. Oof. That seems like a waste of resources. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. plenty of water. <laughs> <laughs> Tie their feet. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to narrate, but I, I mean, I, I want to strike fear in them mm. and actually cause them harm one at a time. But I'd like to tie all of the crew feet up, and, right. and then oh, you know, I know me how, like that. I know how we could drown them without even wasting the rope. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, it's like, um. Touching uh secondary power is uh using the acupuncture needles, they can paralyze people temporarily, but it's probably long enough for them to drown. Okay, so we got we got Captain and we got Taoshi <clears throat> on the side of physical and mental pain to get them to divulge the information. Dr. Rune Hart wants to take the erudite path and search for documents under the ship and in hopes of finding those first to Save the uh, the crew of the Evergreen from torture, and uh, turtles. <clears throat> what are you I'd doing? Also... Yes. Well, I'd also. I, I'm sorry. I also just want to make sure my second goal is to keep um, Roger Beard safe. Ah, uh, okay. And to keep Roger Beard safe. Yeah. Okay. Haoshing's main thing from this is they want to go loot the <clears throat> ship and see what kind of stuff that they have, but that has no bearing on whether the crew's alive or dead. So I don't know how that factors in. Oh, I mean. I believe that would probably factor in as a alternative goal, right? So oh, okay. you're rolling Even independently if... of everyone else, and then we roll, uh, okay. and then you get to decide how the ship gets dealt with because you rolled high. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we got everybody on their own. And Turtle? Uh, I think Turtle's uh, having a conversation with Artem Artemis going, well, Artemis, they're looking for, for Roger, and we're looking for Roger. And the witch wants Roger. What if we take Roger to the witch? But we don't tell Roger that because he won't want to go to the witch. But we should take him there because then we could have, we could get into we'd see the witch and then you know get the, all of that. Oh. And I think I, I think Artemis is thinking very hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So you guys are chatting and let's roll. Which gets a five or actually Jack? Oh, I see a six and a one. Ooh, two sixes. And another two six. sixes. Oh, okay. Those die are so pretty. These okay. die are so pretty. I know. They're so right? dang pretty. I, they're so wonderful. Soon you'll be able to buy them maybe, but <laughs> if you want to get them today for free, type exclamation point dice and we'll give you some instructions on how to choose the dice that you want. We're giving them away and uh, just for people watching the stream. Yeah, there you go. See? Um, okay, so this is how we're going to do it. We got a six and a six. You guys are at plus one. That's a partial success. You're not going to get everything that you want. It's just going to be a little bit of what you want. But which one of you gets to narrate what the want is, we're going to send that to a roll-off. So high roller, no math involved, um, between who rolled this week? We got Tao uh, and... Captain and, and me. And, uh, that's, and that's a dead crew. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh. All right, Tao. Well, Tao will still go along with the killing the crew of Captain Once. So that's not their concern. Um, but they they want to go and see what kind of stuff is on the ship. They want they're looking for supplies. Okay. So tell us. What, so how about you get the supplies, but you don't get the map or the location, okay. Okay. and the crew gets hurt. You said it's mixed success, right? So partial, only get a little bit of a partial only success. Get a yeah. Bit of what you want. So the only, they're looking for one, they, they're not looking for like a bunch of useful stuff. They're only looking for like one thing particular. So if the rest of it is like garbage or like, you know, unusable, that's okay. All they're looking for is um, to see if there are any opals on board. Mm, to replace the missing opals from before. So do yeah, you find Yeah, the bag opals? of powdered opal. Do you find it? 
Uh, oh, is that something that you determine nope, as the you. GM? You get or... to narrate the oh, okay. You want to find stuff? What stuff you find? Okay, yeah. If um, if if it's only like partial success, I say like there's nothing else usable on the ship. Unfortunately, it's like their their food was like close to expiring, and so it's like we can't take anything else off of the ship. But they do manage to find one one little like you know walnuts. Or actually, that's a pretty big opal, I guess. Um, like one little like dime size opal. So, and they will take that. That's all they cared about. Interesting. Okay, so Captain, you tied people's legs together. You threw them overboard, but their lips stayed mum. Well, we got to keep this guy, Raja, safe somehow. Two more ships fancying his direction. We must make haste. Mm-hmm. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, I'm sorry, Artemis. Aye, aye. See Who's the captain? <laughs> <laughs> None of the scuttlebutts. Let's go. All right. So, what's the plan right now? Do you you want to yeah, you want to go to the next ship and do this again? <laughs> we, we yeah. Or are we trying to beat escaped. the rest? Sorry. Go ahead, Runehart. Uh, I think the other two escaped. Oh, they did. Okay, right, the other good. two ships. Yeah, yeah, but. Do you want to try to hunt down the other ships? Do you want to try to continue to follow your map to the meeting location well, with Roger Beard? Does Nikki, you want to say something? I have a power. Oh, let's hear about your power. I have a power. Um, if the if the sea is quiet, then and like the other two ships have escaped, uh, Turtle's gonna like walk to the edge of the ship and just sort of uh uh lean over the edge and go. Oh, could you excuse me, miss? Could you tell me where Raja Beard is? And he's just sort of talking into the ocean. And I think you can see some like ocean critters flip by and things like that. Um, if the ocean knows where Roger Beard is, uh, Turtle would like that answer. Okay, well, Turtle, uh, well, Nikki, tell us where is Roger Beard? Oh, sweet. Okay, I don't have to roll for anything. Excellent. There's no one contesting this. Okay. Um, I think that Roger Beard is uh uh has been seen sort of um we're in Florida, right? Florida, yeah. Are there mangroves in Florida? There are mangroves in Florida. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, my public school education. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> it really failed on geography, guys. I don't really know where anything is. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Then in that case, um, yeah, I, I think that a little, a little like fish will come by and like a bunch of bubbles will come up and, and uh, you'll hear turtle go, the mangroves. Oh, 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 oh. it doesn't look good. Oh, oh, that sounds wonderful. And you have half, how many kids? 45. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and then the little fish swims on his way, and uh, Turtle will be like, he's in the mangroves just south of here, around a historically accurate mangrove from 1778. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, we'll, uh, I guess, get Artemis to direct the ship there. <laughs> um, what are you doing? Or Captain. <laughs> or Captain. <laughs> what are you doing with the other crew and the other ship? Oh. Hmm. I leave that to Captain and, and Tao. Well, you are now technically in possession of two ships. We're in a, we have an armada? You come <laughs> in a ship and you bound up its captain. I mean. Oh, we didn't kill that guy? Uh, not yet. Do you want to kill him? <laughs> I would probably keep any of the other guys besides the captain. Um. I guess Artemis can. Oh, Goblin, Goblin Tuesday. Tuesday! Oh my God! Gobble, Thanks Goblin. for the raid. I hope you all Hi are guys. doing well. I hope you uh, are going to enjoy some mountain witching. 
The goblins are waiting for all your tiny, shiny things. Please give all of them. My yes. hand. <laughs> now you're in the right place. We're pirating. We're pirates. Yeah, well, pirates. half of us are. <laughs> yeah, we got two pirates. We got yeah, a, speak for yourself. a British <laughs> Navy f f officer retired. And we have um, some sort of, uh, like, I don't know, subversive government overthrowing <laughs> apothecary poison making zombie handifying so, someone who is just generally unsettling just generally <laughs> unsettling yeah i love them i love them <laughs> indeed goblin tuesday indeed um i think um if you're interested captain seaweed if you want to captain one boat hard to miss will captain the other <laughs> <laughs> I could fancy that. <laughs> okay. Now, cool. My my ring um does I do have to be on that ship for an hour to to tune my ring to the the sails so it will take an hour's time before I can man it myself. It's okay. I uh Roger is in, is safe where he is right now. Um according to um uh Zephyr. Uh butterfly fish that i talked to oh it has the butterfly fish has a name mm -hmm. I wonder, beautiful I, what do we do when candles to jack can we tie him to the the front of the ship <laughs> tie him to the masthead okay yeah all right Can, candle okay. mast <laughs> candle mast <laughs> did you <just> say <laughs> that's great okay candle said jack is strapped to the masthead that's uh i guess a form of punishment or, you know, uh, public embarrassment. Um, and so make sure I understand the situation correctly. Captain, you are going aboard one of the ships by yourself. No crew, just you and your magic to pilot this ship. You have to do your uh, magical attunement process first. And then everyone else, both crews, or are we leaving? I feel like we should send the pirate crew that we just defeated with captain seaweed like pirates with pirates because the navy guys think that the monkey is our captain so it's true that's like... a good point <laughs> yes okay yeah okay okay we got captain seaweed and the pirate crew uh with candlestick jack as the masthead uh on the former ship named the evergreen you want to rename it let me know and uh, we never picked a name for our ship but uh and everyone else is on the other ship we're gonna call it the artemis for now <laughs> okay. Our Miss is pretty. Name. He's pretty stoked about that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. Do, I don't know. Uh, um. Uh, leaving Captain alone on that ship. I'm just thinking about splitting the party, guys. <laughs> it's never a good idea. No, exactly. At least not one in three. Um, I won't ask for help, but I'll be like, I guess I'll just go over there <laughs> all by myself. Here I go. Oh. Ties on over. Um, I think Turtle will take a moment and and look at Artemis and be like, "Are you sure you want to captain this ship? I, 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 I would like to also have Captain Seaweed on this adventure. I want this to be successful. Uh, if you're okay with that, Artemis, I'll go with him." And I think, like, it's hard to read monkey speak sometimes, especially when they're maybe more emotional. But uh, Turtle seems to understand. He's like, oh, yes. I'll, I'll be back soon. Um, and uh, he'll he'll go uh, follow Captain Seaweed to the other ship. But he'll look back, like, at least four or five times um, before getting off the ship. I know what a captain's not wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you got you got turtle on your ship, Mister Seaweed, Captain Seaweed. Sorry, give him a low five. All right. Yeah. With my good hand. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's actually was... pretty dope. <laughs> turtle will definitely take that low five. <laughs> <laughs> and so back on the uh, the now named Artemis, um, who's actually in charge now? 
<laughs> I guess so. I, mean, I think logistically it would probably have monkey. to be Runeheart. <laughs> okay. Like, like Runeheart actually knows how to like <laughs> sa sail the ship, and then the guys just think they're taking orders from the monkey. I think Runeheart has done an excellent job at translating for for Artemis. I think, I think he, they make pretty yeah. Yeah, I think he continues to to do that, and uh, <laughs> you know maybe fill the gaps where the monkey's knowledge of running a ship runs short. But I feel like it's you know. It's a good symbiotic relationship. <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. So now we are in possession of two ships. We know that Cap that uh Mr. Beer, who's the uh defector from La Bruja's crew, who you're supposed to meet and who has promised to help you navigate to her stronghold, is hiding in a mangrove forest. Um any any uh plans or input before we get to the get to the mangroves? Mm. No. All right. No. So, uh I presume you're both sailing in the same direction together inside of each other towards where the mangroves are. Mangroves usually uh inhabit shallow areas that um are rather swampy and have small passages. You get into the mangrove swamp area and you get to a place where it's too shallow for your ships to pass through. You have to eat, dock the ships and travel in on a smaller craft or try to, to walk on the dry land parts as you, uh, so if you, unless you want to jump in and tell me what you're going to do, uh, I'm assuming you'll take the the small craft, and you know the small rowboats, and try to row into um, further into the the forest. And as you travel down this river, the vegetation becomes thick, and you look back, you can no longer see your ships, and you hear gunfire coming out from inside of the forest. Someone is shooting at you and your boats um, and trying to stop you from make, to reaching Mr. Beard and your meeting point. Someone has followed you. Um, and you're getting mm. shot at from both sides. What are you all going to do? Can we see anybody through the mangroves? Can um, we see where the you can, is yes. coming from? You can see your attackers. But you're far enough mm. away that it obscures that you're out of sight of the ships, so the crew can't come to your rescue. But it's us mm. four. It's you four. Five. F oh, Artemis is with you. So add the monkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. Five. I don't know. In my imagination, the monkey was staying back and actually captaining the ship. But yes. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. No. Well, you five. You five. No. You're all okay. there. <laughs> Nikki, no. Nikki wants her monkey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are you doing? They're gonna, they're trying to um, sink your boats to stop you from progressing further. Wait, they're shooting at us or the boats? Um, they're shooting yeah. at us in, in the boats. boats. At you in, in the small boats. boats. Yes, but oh, they're, I they're thought we got on land. I'm sorry. Um, we're in small boats. Can we just shoot back? You can. You can. Do you want to? Try yeah. It? What do you want to do about it? Do you want to capture them? You want to kill them? You want to outrun them? I, I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like just kill them or kill enough of them that they stop chasing us and lose their nerve. Yeah, I'll help you on this. Yeah. Turn fire. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, we got two groups then, so I'm gonna roll two dice. I gotta take the better. And we got Nikki and uh, Chase on one side. So I got a, ooh, I got a six. Use that spending trust. Did I, how much trust did I have with Dr. Runehart to begin with? I don't know, is the numbers beside me the number of trust I've given somebody? The number beside you is how many trust you have left to spend right now to help that person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you got a two for Runeheart. Um, then I will spend that trust to add to your roll because I'm going to return fire as well. Let's do it. 
Oh, yeah. Well, that was, I'm glad. Yes. Okay, we're tied? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, you guys are up one. Mine don't add together. My, I can never oh, add okay. together. Gotcha. It's stacked in your favor. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> partial success. So you like you in order to kill to kill people these people you'll need a three or better you didn't even get close but you got uh -oh. a partial success your general goal was to make them lose their nerves so that you can continue on your journey so you get that a little bit um, mm. how does that happen I think as we return fire we uh, a couple of our our um, bullets hit well musket balls I don't know what the attack is at this point uh punch a couple of holes in their small boats and i think mostly just slow them down but if it's a if it's only a partial success they're probably still that's just buying us time they're they're probably mm -hmm. still hot on our tails okay so i'm gonna say that they're keeping after you and they shoot another volley of fire but because you've been able to disable one of their boats i only get to roll one die next time so Mm. Ah. Nice. Um, so they're chasing you. You're trying to get out of their sight. Any other bright ideas? I'd like to, if if I can. Uh, the answer is always yes. I'd like to try to use one of my powers to maybe track and. Uh, mm. See if we can use this to find where Beard is. Okay. Uh, so. How, how will that? Uh, so, like, basically, you want to try to outrun them by taking a path they cannot follow. I think it's more like get to Beard as quickly as possible before they can catch up to us. All righty. Okay, so they're going to try to catch you, and you're going to try to outrun them. Captain? Yeah. Tao, Turtle, you guys helping in any way? Yeah, do I have... I still got two. I'll spin a trust. Yeah, how you helping? I, I want to help, but I'm trying to think of how. Yeah, yeah I don't how know you... how yet, yeah. but okay. I would like to help. Give you a beat to think up a, a fun way. Okay, I got a suggestion. How about some cover fire? Mm. Mm. Do we just have muskets like in the boats? Oh yeah. Oh, you're pirates. Yeah, when you, you never go anywhere without a gun. Yeah. 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 Artemis even has muskets. He's got two of them. <laughs> I mean, Tal's <laughs> probably obvious by now. Tal's not a fighter, but they'll pick up a gun. Sure. You you have to load mine and then hand it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. I like that. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Tal Ta will load the gun and let uh, the person who could probably actually aim do the actual shooting. <clears throat> All right, Cap, you spend in trust? Yeah. What you let's said? Go. Okay, let's do it. Boom. Let's go. Ka chow. Ka chow. Oh, we got it. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Okay, six. Uh, can, am I rolling too? Like, I am like rolling to help Captain help uh, Runehart. <laughs> Yeah, so the way that works, you can roll if you happen to roll a six. Uh, I guess that's great, but um, you can't add. You can, we can only spend trust once for adding. Oh, okay, um, so I can't really do any better than what we already have. True, yeah. Okay. Okay, double the success, guys. Um, you get what you want, and you get something special, and you can kill people. So who wants to lead it off? Dr. Runard, it was your idea to use your power. So tell us how it goes down. Well, how about how about this? I'll I'll give part of the narrative and maybe Captain, you can give the other part. Uh, so Runehart uh hands off his gun as well, and you see him kind of his eyes kind of roll back a bit and start to glow, and he like seems to be scanning the area around and is no longer aware of the surroundings and is instead just steering the ship or steering the small rowboat with the little uh, rudder thing and keeps saying things like faster, faster, and uses that to kind of track in on exactly where Beard is hiding in here. Um, 
while the rest of you return fire. So for, for my part of the, the narrative here, I'll say the success is that we, we, are, we managed to track down where Beard is in the mangrove forest. <clears throat> as we're Beautiful. out running them. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's clowning up my leg. It hurts so bad. <laughs> um, I'd like to say me and Tao are just having like oh, just a lot of fun. Uh, I, I'm like, I'm like, toss me another basketball, and she like throws it in, and I'm just like, yeah, and then I'm just she, like, this, I live for this, and I, I'm shoot, we're shooting at them and stuff. I was not a fighter, but quite dexterous. So you know, they're doing, they're they're loading the muskets about like surprisingly fast rate for somebody who's not like military trained. Yeah, I love it. I love it, and I, I, I like, I, you know, puncture their their boat, and then I knock one in the head. I'm like, oh, bullseye! And <laughs> we're just we're having a lot of fun uh, taking care of these other guys while we while he's doing his thing. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we got a boat, and it's sunk. Musket ball to the head, and we've tracked down Roger Beard finally. So. Let's jump over to this. So you find Roger, and I did not was not expecting a forest. So there's a building, but we'll it's ignore Okay, that. I genuinely thought pub <laughs> first, and I should have went with that. But then I was like, Florida mangroves. <laughs> uh, well, I can't predict everything. And yeah. <gasps> so he's hiding there in the forest. He um he hears you approaching on your boats, and he turns and says, "Ho there." Who goes? Um, and he takes out his sword and he he raises himself to see who it is before he um, just trembling, holding his sword. He looks exhausted and haggard and like he hasn't really had a good meal in days and has been holed up here for a while. Identify yourselves. Be the friend or foe. And Dr. Runehart found him, right? Yeah, or... Dr. Runehart found him. Mm -hmm. You're all there together. Oh, we're friends. Friends. This is Captain Seaweed and this is Captain Artemis. And uh, <laughs> this is Dr. Runehart and this is Tao Jing and I'm Turtle. Uh, when he hears your voice, Turtle, his his face changes. You see a calm and uh, a happiness wash over him. It says, "Turtle, no, that can't be." I was oh, uh, your voice sounds so familiar. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. Oh, um, where, where, where have I? Where have I heard your voice before? Where? Yes, turtle. Turtle. Where? Why? Why? Why does? Why does Beard know you? Did you sail? Wait. Do you know Jim's boy, who's related to Susan, married Susan? You know Jim's boy. gets it's Arnold's nephew. No. Uh, any last names in there? Oh, we, <laughs> that, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly how they know each other through Jim's boy, <laughs> Arnold's <laughs> nephew, who's married to Susan. <laughs> that's who you are. <laughs> you came from you. Oh, yes. From New York. And then you, you, oh came here to did you come here to retire uh, no i i have been serving on one of Bruja's ships for seven years now it's been seven years i thought i talked to you this summer oh i you know i've heard it only gets faster time as you get it older. really does <laughs> gets away on you yeah i I've I've been living that pirate life for for too long, um, mm. and 
there, there were there were some things that were going on. I couldn't just, I just could not abide, um, and I tried to escape, and um, I, uh, I, I knew that we were being hunted by the uh, the Amer the American government. So I, I sent, I sent a letter, and I had correspondence, and I promised that I would help bring Le Bruja down, and um, I was told to wait here for those who would be coming to stop her, and they sent you, Turtle? I guess. Well, we're going to need some luck. Um, I, have a, I have a chart to show the path back to the uh, where Le Bruja's fortress is but the waters are treacherous um it will it, it will take someone who's been there before and an expert navigator to successfully take a ship through those waters mm. yeah mm. does that mean you're coming with us uh, i want to come with you or well, we'd love to have you good because you have a whole fleet coming after you Oh, and that. Lebrun you don't has want the it. The entire fleet, did she? Well, three ships. I don't know what she has. It's actually pretty impressive. I mean, you're just one guy, and I mean, like, you're just, you know, I would think Joe couldn't really, you know, and then there's you, and you got three ships after you. That's a, that's pretty impressive. I should buy you a, your next day. Oh. I would love one. There, there, there is a lot around out here in the in the forests um so can we can we uh can we get going absolutely let's get you a, a strong drink and some fresh shorts to do a, a walkabout yeah get it on the go sounds sounds wonderful but let me tell you the um it will it will take uh, at least a, a couple of days to sail from here to the islands where her fortress is, and then it will be quite quite the trip inland on the island that she has held up at to get to the final destination. Um, it's uh, it's not for the faint of heart. You don't happen to know of the sort of squid game this <laughs> <laughs> this Bruja may have with me. I I don't know. I had squids as calamari everywhere on the ship. You 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 think she sent squid after you? I've heard that she has. She deals with magic. I just didn't know uh, if it, it, it extends that far, or if maybe a. Uh, some past Kraken experiences have upset all of the squid in the ocean. I, I think the second is far more likely. I have not seen people claim that Labrua can command the creatures of the sea, but that I have not seen. Mm. She claims they claim she's got magic, yes, but people will insist that their ship was cursed, that their valuables disappeared, that uh, she has placed a hex on them and. Therefore, they uh, can never f come across an easy prize on the sea. But uh, oh, I, I, I uh, think if the squids are after you, it's uh, something else entirely. Well, uh, my worst fears are coming true then. This is good. It's good to know. And so, so why would the Kraken be after you? <laughs> oh, it is a long story. We should start drinking now. Oh, me and my crew. It's the longest fight of our lives. The Kraken came out of nowhere with his long tentacles slapping the ship in half. Uh, yes, another time we should discuss it. All right, so... Um, we, uh, return back to the ship? Mm-hmm. I yeah. think so. All right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we um, With a barrel of mead. <laughs> 
from the Do we, we need... just found. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do we need to resupply before we head out? Like, how are we? Well, we got two ships now. <laughs> That's true. We could always like take off this the stuff from one ship and load it into ours. So we don't need to go into town and risk Roger being found. Yeah. Do we want to maintain and two ships? And put Roger on the other ship because it's low manned or, or do we want to combine all efforts? Oh. Mm. Mm. Our armada is pretty intimidating. <laughs> I feel like if we're going to be at sea for the next leg, having a backup ship is not a terrible idea. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Technically, uh, I might be able to man it from our ship. Oh. I, I just have to be within 300 feet of it. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty close. I would be close. But... <laughs> it just be it's pretty close for a ship at, in the ocean. I would be on the I'd be on the poop deck like, <laughs> like left. I mean port. <laughs> it's just an option. Yeah, maybe we'll maybe keep a couple crew on it. Never well, know when we instantly get in, under in a fight and we're instantly three hundred meters away and we have a stowaway ship. Yeah, I think we'll we should keep it with us for sure. Yeah, I think I I don't know. I can't see why we can't can't carry on and head towards the yeah. island that the witch is on. It is said. Okay, so we're keeping both ships. We get back. I think this is a wonderful time to pause again and reevaluate our trust. Um, so why don't we do that? So I want to first refresh trust back to where it was. Restore. Okay, this is where we uh we left off at. Um, who would like to? We started with Nikki last time. How about we start with with Beep this time? Oh um, wait, I'm looking for all the fates again. I lost it on the page. Oh, here we go. I just oh, I found it. I found it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Like, is anything like? Oh, you want to speculate first? Let's speculate first. Oh. Well, I haven't seen if like that, if, you know, if that affects. Actually, I guess that's like an in-character versus out-of-character thing. In-character Tao doesn't have any reason to trust anybody less so far. So again, just one trust all around. One uh, trust things have been... all around. Yeah, one trust all around. Everything's been going, everything's been going fine so far. You know, they haven't butted heads with anybody in any way that would make them distrust them. Or, yeah, so uh, in, in Tao's mind, everybody's just growing closer as a crew and as friends. Yay. Aww. Hey, Rebel oh, Aviator! Rebel Aviator with the raid! <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Rebel. Thank you so much. You're coming in at a, at a tail end piece. Oh, Rebel Aviator, he was one of the first players in the first campaign. He was amazing. I loved his, like... Ooh, I don't want to give too many spoilers. It was Torgan. He was like a warforged monk, and he really, he really got it towards the end. And like, he just magically knew the secret passcode to get into the witch's fortress. Ooh. Okay, that was a spoiler. But you should, you really should go watch it if you, uh, if you're enjoying tonight. Um, and it was good. It was good. I remember watching that first session. You're amazing as Torgan Rebel, by the way. I just want yeah. to say that. I mean. So thanks for being here. So we are. So you guys just all dropped in. We were just about to go around the room and reevaluate our trust to see how e each person's actions during the last leg of the journey um, affects how they feel about everyone. And that trust is a pool of points that you can use to either uh, work together or to backstab someone um, in a metaphorical sense. I guess what well, also could have been in a literal sense. But that probably won't come until session three. Anyway, just to recap, Beep was like, I, t I trust everyone a little bit more. And then mm -hmm. we got the raid. So who'd like to go next? I, I'm on board with her. I feel like uh, nobody was against odds. You know, we, we seem to all work as a team. Nice. I, I probably should trust all around. 
stressed all around. All right. Turtle. Um, I definitely feel like um Turtle trusts Dr. Runehart more because of how he's taken to Artemis uh oh. and has in, has become Artemis's interpreter, um, which I think I uh, really appreciate that, which, it, which, by the way, rating party, <laughs> Artemis is my monkey in this pirate adventure. I'm the guy with the monkey. Also, 92-year-old man. <laughs> um, <laughs> the turtle shell on his back and kind of looks like Master Roshi. <laughs> yeah, he really does. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> and someone said it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> hey, Artemis um, is also a respectable captain. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. Artemis is also a uh, captain. So yeah, I definitely trust a Dr. Runehart. Oh, it's tough with Tao because it's like she's so willing to poison just about anybody. <laughs> but she's so nice. But she poisons people. Exactly. So I think it comes to a net zero well, this time around. <laughs> it's a net zero this time around. We'll see. I'm going to I'm going to work on that. Um, and then with Captain, how many trust points do I have with everybody right now? Not enough. Well, you not give, enough. You've given <laughs> Captain four. You've given Dr. Runehart four or two. And then you've given Tao only one. Only wow. OK. Um, I think maybe when Cap uh, when um, um, Turtle joined your ship, Captain, uh uh he felt too torn uh from artemis and maybe wasn't focused on helping you as much as he should have been uh which didn't increase the trust because he was he was a little homesick i think so sorry about that we'll have more moments <laughs> okay so it sounds like it stays the same yeah okay yeah I, actually i have an alibi if i may Ooh. oh Oh, I just was thinking, I I think I should not give Tao a, a trust point because I, I don't know the motive behind giving the monkey, um, like power over the ship. Uh, I started thinking about that and I was like, yeah, I might think, is she secretly trying to, you know, get rid of me or, you know, that was pretty harsh uh so i think i'm she, she did like you know killing the shipmates on the other crew so we have like like-minded thoughts but i don't think i'm gonna actually give her a trust if i can take that back yeah and you guys did have fun yeah. shooting people you had it's synergy true. shooting people we did have a lot yeah. of fun there though so yeah still the captain of the ship's kind of a big deal yeah that yeah, yeah it kind very, of was. that's very fair yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went from you to a monkey so yeah i feel yeah. like there needs to be a, a, a second mutiny next time. <laughs> <laughs> right down there turn it over <laughs> no. wait what <laughs> i was implying that you might make the monkey disappear <gasps> what a you horrible seem, thing! You seem worried, more worried about that than when I was. A, when I thought you thought the first time. Anyway, Doctor Runehart. Mm. Yes. Well, I think uh, I think for making the monkey the captain, Doctor Runehart will uh, invest another point in Tal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the right choice. Uh, the strong leadership qualities in the monkey. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe for having having the monkey in the first place, uh, he'll invest another in uh, turtle. As I know who it's actually for. It's for Artemis. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, seven trust points for Artemis, um, and. <laughs> I think uh, I'm not sure about this this Captain Seaweed guy. Oh, um, yeah, we'll we'll have to see. I think I think Doctor Runehart may be starting to have a little skepticism about Ooh. Captain Seaweed. Is that a negative trust, or like stay the same trust? Uh, wait, how many am I at right now? Two. You've given him two. two. Yeah, he has two to yeah. use for or against you. Um, 
<laughs> stay the same. Stay the same. Yeah. Just All stay. Right. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to start off with some speculation, and Turtle definitely has some ulterior motives going on. Uh, maybe oh. it's an unholy pact. Maybe it's... Um, Wait, what was the? I don't. Okay, I should remember all of this. But what was the other? The one? true motives one motives. is so hard because it could true be motives. anything. It could yeah, like, true motives is a anything. wild card. Yeah. One of yeah. those two. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Turtles got that whole like talking with the monkey. Oh yeah, we could bring beer to the witch. Mmm. Uh, <clears throat> ooh. Let's see, Tao. Tao is, Tao is, I want it to be revenge, but it's not going to be revenge because I really want it to be revenge. So it's probably, oh, could be past allegiance. There's something brewing there that at the very beginning was like, do you have connections to other governments? There, there's something going on. Captain. Do you know what would be amazing if you went totally off script and you got revenge, but it was revenge against the Kraken? <laughs> okay, it's not that because you laughed that way, but that would be cool. Um, and do yeah, Dr. Runer, nothing new, so it's still got to be desperately in love with your estranged family. I could see it. Yeah. Who wants to go next? Mm. Is that everybody? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, I speculated about everybody, but someone else take a chance to speculate. Oh. With really? the, oh, go ahead. Go, you go ahead. I was with, with his eyes rolling in the back of his head. It makes me think Unholy Pack. But I don't know. If, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was like, I don't know why he has that power. Um, but that seems kind of demonic in a, in a sense. So, uh <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. That's a, uh, everyone else. I, I don't really know, but that is some sort of clue <laughs> that I have. I I don't have any. I actually don't have any justification for thinking this, but I just think it'd be funny if Turtle was revenge, because they just seem like they're like such an unassuming old man that it'd be great if they were actually like, yeah, like, uh, you know, like bloodthirsty and out to murder somebody here. <laughs> It's like Yoda, go Yoda gone Sith Lord. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Be like the last moment. Hey, Captain G, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm looking here. I want to. I don't know. I think that I'm going to I'm going to put worst fear on Chase on Dr. Runehart just because you sounded nervous about going on this trip um so that's what i kind of got from that scene when you're talking to your daughter you were worried um and i think perhaps it's hard to tell with with um captain seaweed I want it to be something about the crack. I want it to be something about the Kraken. I want you to go <laughs> there to make an unholy pact to take on the Kraken. You know what I mean? Like I want, you know, something in there. That's what I want. Um, and then, or maybe, I don't know. Yeah. And then past allegiances is very strong. I, I agree for Tao. Also though, like, mm, yeah. Okay. That's it. Oh. You need a. You need a. You need a. You need a mom to have a daughter. So there could also be desperately in love for Chase, or for uh, Doctor Runehart. Mm -hmm. right? And she didn't mention her in the picture, did you? I can't remember if you did. I did not. Oh! <laughs> I think I. I have a strong guess for the captain because of a specific wording, but I, I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't know if I want to say it out loud today. Because I feel like I still want more evidence. Mm. Uh, 
I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I think if the evidence stacks up, I, I'll I'll bring it back, and maybe tomorrow, if there's even more, it'll just be you know another clue in the chain. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Well, fa- I see you. <laughs> Fath, thanks for the raid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fath's another one of another streamer who loves to use 3D dice. I. I see Fath stream up on our little watch now page all the time. It's really awesome. Cool. Yeah. So thanks for dropping by. Next thing, I want to get chat involved and see what they think about the different um, the fates for everyone. <laughs> um, I'm going to go start a poll here. Okay. Um, let's see. Click here. This has been so fun so far. It's it's mm-hmm. It's so interesting to try yeah. and like... You know, you want to foreshadow and you want to like, you, but you also building trust is an interesting mechanic. Like, yeah, like I, I think it's so like, it's almost like maybe this sounds sociopathic when I say this a lot, like you're playing the other players to give you trust a little bit. Like, I feel like. I feel like Chase played me as Dr. Runehart by, by being friendly with Artemis. And I was like, I cannot give him one. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. But I'm like, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, it's hard to know, you know, and like just the, it, but then also it's building relationships naturally too. Like, it's just, you know, like the moment between Tao and um, Captain Zewi, like how you had synergy with the bullets there. I was just like, that's great. That's a good moment. That's great. So if you get if anyone in chat wants to vote, type in your number. <coughs> You'll see it on the screen. One death, three love, two revenge. What do you think Captain Seaweed's fate is? I typed in one as a demonstration for I don't know what reason, because that's not at all what I think Captain Seaweed is about. <laughs> but yeah, go type it in. Um, but yeah, let's just keep on that thread. So I really do love this game. It is quite a a. Uh, interesting and different game how are you all uh others feeling about how this game's going i'm really enjoying this system i've never played it before but i'm really liking it yeah same it's, I, I think it's kind of cool to you know i'm i'm so used to systems that are uh i guess there's the the what would you call it like the normal way that the dice tell the story, which is mm. that they determine how your intentions are reflected in the world versus here. It's it's like the dice determines really just the bare bones, like macro level outcome. And you get to determine a lot more detail, which is cool. Yeah, it's a lot less crunchy than like D&D. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. It indeed it is i love the improv part so much because it's like yeah. i don't know what you're gonna do i can't plan for it and you just get this combined storytelling that you could not get otherwise right but somehow i still have to plan things and i get them really wrong sometimes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the big group the- forest i loved it yeah, I, I was going to say about that too. Oh, go ahead, Nikki. No, no, you, you, you go, go ahead, Chase. Yeah. I was going to say I, I keep thinking about that too. Of like, I'm when I GM, I'm such a planner, and I'm so, I'm I, when I play, I also try to be a good player and like look for the plot hooks, look at look for the things that the GM is handing out as like you could do this, you could, and like so that. I am I I cause as little stress to the person running the game as possible. For here, I'm just like I don't know how you're keeping up because there are so many left turns, and yeah. So taking oh. notes for this would be very interesting. Well, keep throwing me left turn. Like my notes are very, as you might expect, general. I've just got small statements of a situation, something that I hope you cannot ignore. Because the one time I threw something at that was too super ignorable, I was like, "Oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go, they're gonna go to this tavern, and it's gonna be haunted by ghosts, and they're gonna be like, come help us solve the ghosts.' Oh, we're ghosts. We have uh, 
unfinished business. And I'd be like, oh, you know, like you recognize one of the ghosts. What's the ghost about? What does the ghost want? And then they just were like, haunted, haunted tavern. No, thanks. And just like, we're just going to keep going. We don't have time for this. <laughs> we have to go defeat the witch. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> that's pretty gross. Great. That's pretty yeah. great. That's great. <laughs> and then last time, a lot of the characters wrote a lot about ghosts and spirits and their powers and about like why they were coming on things. And so I was like, oh, oh, yeah. And then like. Captain based his character on the Witcher. And he's like, I got one blade for monsters and one blade for humans and stuff. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, he's going to go, like, kill a ghost. And then, like, I don't know. Like, someone was just, like, they were at. So I wanted to make the haunted tavern work. So this was going to be the haunted tavern again. They they went to the tavern. Ghost things happened. But someone was like, oh, yeah, I've got my ghost powers. I tell everyone, everyone. There was, like, just a total left turn in the plot. And I made this beautiful picture of, like, his mini like stabbing a ghost. We never got to use it. <laughs> but everything was so much better. I'm not complaining. Um, That's great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if there's a message I want to send to the players, it's that like, keep at it. Like throw me those curveballs, take control. That makes it actually easier for me. Because um, now like my notes going out for tomorrow I got like two things. I need to have like eight to 10 things prepared and I'm going to have to think about it now, but it's so much easier knowing about your characters, your motivations and where you're headed and kind of what your, uh, your fate might be. So, Oh, we got another tie for Tao revenge, past allegiance and worst fear. Dang. Worst fear is an interesting one. Worst fear is an interesting one. What, what? Okay. I don't know who, Typed in six. Who typed in six? Beep. You typed in six oh, for yourself. I, I, I thought we were still. I thought we were still on Captain. I missed the vote. <laughs> I, missed I, I misinterpreted the vote. Oh. Yeah. So I wasn't trying to vote for myself. I just like I thought we were on a different person still. <laughs> just votes for like yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah, what, what did I get? What did I get again? Or what did Tal get again? Uh, I think it was inconclusive. Okay. Oh, wait, yeah. oh, it's on the screen. Uh, revenge. Yeah, revenge. Well, the worst fear is not a tie because I voted on that on myself on accident. Yeah, but it's probably still a tie between revenge and okay. past yeah. allegiance. Anyway. I, I, I will just say that um, you know, because we made like by your advice, we made the characters pretty much to completion before we got handed out our fates. I decided from the get go that no matter what, I was just gonna be. I was gonna be deliberately unsettling, no matter what my secret <laughs> fate was. <laughs> Love it. It's excellent. Okay, let's go on to the next poll. Let's see. We got Dr. Moonheart next. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you all think? Yeah, I really liked how it works out when you get your fate afterwards because you get some really complex characters because you have like a full idea, maybe not a full idea, but at least a solid idea of who your character is. And then getting this like detail about your past that's like super impactful and you have to work it in. In the first game, Grimbeard, if he's still around, his character like is like, I'm gonna make a warlord. He's like this evil, like doesn't care about anyone. And then he got dealt desperately in love. And mm. so he like came up with this whole story, like, okay, I'm on this quest to try to like put aside this evil part of myself to become a better person so I can go be with my love. And it was just, it was amazing to watch that arc. Dr. Runehart, worst fear? Oh my, I didn't need that. Mm. When you threw that down, that was not in my mind at all. But now I can totally see it. It was a good scene. I really, li I really liked that scene, that intro scene. So I thought it was excellent. That yeah. was a good intro scene. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> I made it up in the moment, <laughs> just like. <Yep. laughs> That's what the best stuff is. Okay, and turtle. 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 I Come don't know how long. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. <laughs> I, Ooh, 
I've had like playing an old man in my mind for so long. Like I've just had this character just lined up. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know when I'm going to get a chance to play Turtle. So it was really great to to get the chance to to do this. I'm I'm glad. I'm really mm. loving the characters. So um, you know, that is all that I have prepared for today. Um, are there any like I don't know rules, questions, things you want to tell people? Um, like the player, I mean, the, the viewers about how you're feeling about the game or anything like that. Oh, I'm looking forward to see where, seeing where it goes. Mm -hmm. Me too. Chase, you want to go talk about pocket bard? I love talking about pocket bard. Okay. <laughs> give us, give us the thing about pocket bard. You want, you want the, the pitch? I mean, like all, all the music you've been hearing tonight, uh, aside from, I think your intro music, but all the in-game music was all pocket bard. Um, all the transitions seamless. I mean, y you tell me how, how easy it's been to like switch between explorer and combat. I, I was hearing spe some specific scenes in there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the oh. goal the goal is for it to be easy well the answer is it is super easy like it's awesome it's got a very nice interface you pick a location and then it's got like multiple themes of music the explore the combat um it's even got a little like final fantasy victory dance kind of theme and then that just... <laughs> <laughs> when it's done it automatically takes you from combat to explore that's a that was a a nice time doing our best to like you know part of our our philosophy the whole time has been like how do we just make this thing as out of your way as possible and so little stuff like that where it's like okay you clicked victory you want it to go back to explore 95 percent of the time yeah why not just have it do it automatically and yeah yeah no it makes total sense and like yeah uh when we were having the storm there was like little things to add like rain and wind on top of the music and i use those and one of the things that i really like about is the dynamic intensity slider that's my favorite feature and it makes it really easy <laughs> for, me, for me in the last game like over the course of the three days i just slowly take that slider up and it's imperceptible mm -hmm. you don't notice when mm -hmm. i do it because i just click it up a little bit but it um it's music, right? It pushes your feeling a little bit. And then on day three, this thing's going to be all the way to the edge. It's going to be like going crazy. We're going to be like using like <laughs> the mountain location, There's even a special mountain location. Like, yeah. it's like perfect for this. And I loved it. Um, so I think it's great and I'm glad. And uh, we're working on a lot of cool new stuff with it too. I mean, we, we've got a lot more music coming out, uh, we're we're working on some some cool surprises, so definitely keep an eye on things. Nice. Can uh can I add my music to like YouTube Shorts and videos I make? Uh yeah. So if you if you want to use any of the Pocket Bard music for your streams, your content, uh, you basically just have to tell people where you're getting it from. Um, nice. You know we we love if you put the logo in your overlay somewhere. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, we we just want people to use it. Sweet. Yeah, so we had someone asking about desktop options. It's coming soon, right? We're working on it. It's so close. I, we just, we want it to be right. We want it to be, we want it to be what you want to use. So we're very close. Uh, and yeah, I can't, I can't give a, a concrete date, but it's I, like, I've got the, I've got the the dev beta version installed on my computer. So like, you know, it's close when I'm like, I have a working product that's like almost what we're ready to put out to you. So very close. Yeah. Excellent. So, that might even pull me back into the DM chair. Like I may even come back just for that. Cause it's like yeah. the one thing that was holding me back was just like a really easy music option. And it was always yeah. so frustrating every time I tried to figure out something. Um, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you should try it. Cool. We got a question from, leg day gaming about how have i been integrating the mobile client into obs for the stream it's a bit complicated so what i did was i have the mobile the app on my mobile device over to the side over here it's got a little stand so i can operate it i am running an app on the mobile device called um 
audio relay. I have to also run that uh, on my PC that streams the music from the app into my com computer. And then I'm using um, a another <laughs> app called Audio Cable, which makes a virtual output, a virtual audio cable inside the computer, and I can plug it into other things. I've plugged that into an app called Kenku FM so that even the players can hear it because that was the thing I hated about my old setup. They couldn't hear it. So it goes in there and then through the Discord and then gets into the stream mix so that everybody can hear it as well. Yeah. So if you do have questions, you should go by the Pocket Bard Discord. They have a whole channel about how to get it set up on <coughs> your PC, different workarounds oh. you can try. Uh, and if you're brave enough, you can even at me. I'm in the Discord, and I'll explain it all over again. I'll type it all out. I'll help walk you through it. Um, or you could just wait for the official one. But I'm not going to wait because I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't want it on my PC. There's enough things going on on my PC while I'm streaming that having <laughs> it on the, the mobile device on the stand that's connected to my my uh, equipment over here makes it just easier for me to operate because that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So Perfect. let's go around and give you, everyone else a chance to give some final um, pitches on their stuff. And then we'll uh, see you all tomorrow. Beep. How about you? Castles and Castles. Uh, and yeah. Casters and Castles. Again, shows on Tuesday and Wednesday. They're, they're both fairly long running. So I don't know how easy it would be to get in. The The Wednesday show was supposed to be an eight part mini series, like an eight episode <laughs> mini series. We're on episode 113. <laughs> Oh my! Beautiful. Classic. Congratulations. Classic. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that, and then uh, the new show that uh, my partner and I, Leg Day Gaming. Um, so on his Twitch channel, like uh, Twitch.tv slash Leg Day Gaming, that's a uh, Legendary Adventures, and we're going to be doing our next episode uh, the first weekend of March. So first Saturday of March. So whatever date that is. I followed you guys. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I won't you guys be DMing. He'll, he'll be DMing. I'm running production. So <laughs> oh, eventually cool. having like Pocket Bar desktop, I'll need to learn to use that because I'll be running like the OBS and stuff behind the scenes. So looking Please. forward to it. Nice. Okay, Captain. I uh, don't have anything as prestigious as everyone else. I, I just like to do tutorials for streamers. So uh, if you're if you're a new streamer or if there's I like to think outside the box and I, I make really cool channel rewards from scratch. And sometimes I stream it uh, and how I go from nothing to literally like I say oranges and oranges will float across my screen while I'm, you know, pre-recorded myself sounding like a pirate talking about scurvy. Uh, so I, I, I show how you can do all these cool things and I write, make tutorials and I, I post them on YouTube for you guys to see. And sometimes it's just like VODs of the, of the stream. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's, that's all the plug I got. Why well, you you're being too modest? I want to hype you up. Captain <laughs> makes the most wonderful tutorials. Now listen, you would think that someone who made the three D dice app might not need to watch a tutorial about how to use her own software to get channel <laughs> rewards to work. But I did. I helped. I even, I helped Captain like write some code, write the script, edit the script, and then I was like, mm, I got this. I'm gonna set it up. I could not do it. But I watched the <laughs> tutorial step by step. Yeah. I followed it, and then I got it. These tutorials are great. Um, and you've even made, like, we have a 3D Dice um, Twitch extension where you can spend bits to roll dice. Oh, yeah. And you made a tutorial video about how to use that to make your own custom dice with words on it to choose, to let your viewers choose where you're going to drop in Warzone. Yeah, that's pretty that cool. Is I, like, cool. I like that one. Right? Yeah. It's way more engaging and interesting than... Uh, I don't know, just posting that word in the chat. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it used to be. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and how about you, Nikki? Okay, I'm on a <laughs> roll. Can I, can I like hype you up too? I sure, super, go ahead. <laughs> I super enjoy your streams on Sunday playing JRPGs. Oh. I really enjoy watching them. I love the voices that you do, and oh. you just brought your amazing voiceness tonight, and that made me happy. So go ahead, tell everyone else about the other stuff that you do. <laughs> That's what I do, pretty much. <laughs> I do voices for JRPGs. I'm not a voice actor or anything, guys, so they are all over the place sometimes, but I try, and that's what you do to get better at 
doing stuff like that. You just got to try it. Um, yeah, but yeah, so that's yeah. Come watch JRPGs if you're inter- interested in that. And also, I do do creative stuff, so um, just some writing right now. But uh, tune into those streams on Saturdays. And that's about it. Oh no, hold on, wait a second. What? I'm actually in a different tabletop RPG. I'm in a Pathfinder campaign that runs every second Monday um, on uh, Rev Eldridge's channel who was in uh, uh, the Witch Mountain last time with Captain. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful game. I play Megan, the NPC. <laughs> she's, no, she's supposed to, she's a rogue, but she doesn't have any powers or anything like that. Uh, anyways, she's great. The whole crew is amazing. Amazing chemistry. And Rev's a fantastic GM. So that's on Monday nights. If you could do a shout out for Rev, that would be great. Oh, Rev um, Rich, of course. Yeah, yeah. And then also I'm part of the uh, uh, Tales Behind the Table. I believe that's what it's called. Yes. A little talk show we do on a Monday night in between that. Um, and that could be on a number of channels. So if you follow Revs, you'll eventually get to the channel that we're on because we rotate between the four of us who host it. So it could be on mine. Next week it's going to be on Grimm's, Grim Quest channel. So. Oh. Yeah, we talk okay. about our DM um, stories and live as DMs and different experiences and things like that. So that's what I'm doing. I forgot about those two. So go follow those wonderful people for D&D content because all of them do a lot of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Rev Allegation mm-hmm. and Grim Quests are quite amazing. Um, yeah. Both of them are um, former <laughs> alumna, alumni of uh, this game. One played last time, one played the t- time before. Oh, and Grim Grim Quest also does great voices. Oh, he's amazing. He he's so amazing. Amazing. Yeah. His, character His improv. Was, oh, it, oh, you gotta watch. He had he had past allegiances, and oh my, was there a huge twist at the end? Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was great. That was the first time I saw Grim too in a in a game, and I was like, wow, who's this talented person <laughs> and now i could be in a talk show with him and uh, play yeah. a game with him so i'm delighted that's amazing yeah. well okay i got his name correct so i want to do a raid and i'm not sure who to raid out to any suggestions you guys got trying to find someone playing DD right now and uh, mm, yeah i don't have anybody yeah. okay on. well let's go for broke let's see who's actually who else might be rolling 3d dice Oh, yeah. Ah, ah, here we go. We got yeah. Lena Moon. Okay, we're going to raid out to Lena Moon. I, I have never watched her channel, so don't don't hate me if it's not fun. But they're using 3D dice sometime in the last, like, I don't know, hour. Um, Hold on. I think I have a gifted sub to Lena Moon's channel. I think I have ended up there in the past. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So well, we're, we're going to raid over there. So see you guys over there see you all tomorrow see you all saturday keep your suspicions coming really loving it thank you everyone thanks for the raids thanks for the follows thanks for for everything (laughs) see you soon bye Bye. guys thanks